Mind playing. Chigolo. Dance for any dance. I'm loving you, romance. Ooh, what to say, yeah. It will come a day. When youth will pass away. Brr, what would they say about me? When the end comes, I know. I that was I'm just, just a gigolo. Life goes on without, without me. me. So I ain't got nobody. Nobody cares for me. Nobody. Sing it, Dean. I ain't got nobody. Nobody, nobody. Won't some sweet mama come take, take a, a chance, chance with me? Because I, I ain't, ain't so bad. bad. Hit it, Lee. This show uh. is presented by On It. This show, The Church of What's Happening Now, is brought to you by MeUndies. MeUndies sends you your favorite underwear for the price of two cocktails. For a limited time, our audience, the listeners of The Church of What's Happening Now, gets 20% off of your first order when you go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. The show is also brought to you by Blue Apron. I just cooked my favorite Blue Apron meal with them ever last week. It's a peanut. It's a West African peanut chicken. With Blue Apron, you can cook all of the meals you want to make, all of the meals you're making at restaurants for less than $10 per delicious meal. Go to blueapron.com slash joey right now. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping at blueapron.com slash joey. Monday, February 6th, the day the devil was buried at fucking sea and hit in the head. The church of what's happening now. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Welcome to Podcastville. Whatever the fuck. Joey Diaz, my main man, Lee Syatt, Dean Delray, for another fun-filled few hours of drug-induced fucking music talk. I'm your host, Flavor. Great weekend in Nashville. If you came to the shows, thank you very much. If you went to see Dean Delray for his birthday shows in uh, La Jolla, thank you very much. Uh, Comedy's at an all-time high, but it wouldn't be this high. Without you fucking people coming to the shows and uh, putting these sh fucking performances together. I mean, it's just comedy. Every comedy club owner I talk to says his weekends are crazy now. Whether there's a monkey up there or fucking Mark Maron's there or Joe Rogan. I mean, these places are packed. And uh, it's like a comedy fucking revolution all over again. You heard about this from the early 90s. By the time I got into comedy, they said it was dead. What I see now is uh, a fucking comedy revolution. I see Lee sweating, going through changes already. All right, I'm going. I'm deep sweating. <coughs> but, What's going uh, on, man? You sweating from what? Who knows? From it seems like we took a sugar cube. But uh, do you think like when do, have you talked to comedy club owners for comedians who don't have podcasts? Like, do they see the dip for, with people who come in and don't have like a? Good They're seeing. Brian Morton at the Laugh Factory in fucking Chicago sells out every Saturday night. Okay. And maybe, let's say he puts 10 people up, maybe four of those people have podcasts. You know? Wow, okay. But it's not like podcasts is like Joe Rogan or Mark or something like that. These are, at comedy, it's just people involved in comedy. Again. Yeah, but you don't need, uh, it doesn't need to be at Mark or Joe Rogan's level. Especially, like, if you guys had started podcasts when you were open micers, you'd have people that might be one person, but you'd have at least one person from that podcast on this podcast now. That's true, too. That's a good way of looking at it. What's up with you, Dean Del Rizzi? Man, that fucking weed wiped me out. That sativa fucking killed you. I don't even get sativas. It's 24 carat. 
Man. I told you, we ain't fucking around tonight. Tonight we're taking us to the deep, murky, murky waters yeah. of the fucking drug underworld. Fuck vice and that bullshit. This is living it. You see motherfuckers living it here. We're mixing edibles. We took liquid Sid with the ice cube. We're taking it back here. We ain't got no time to fuck around. Though. I'm not even sure what's in the chocolate bar. Who knows what was in the chocolate Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I find something in my pocket now, I take it. Life's too fucking short. Who gives a fuck? You got six hours to kill and you find something in your pocket, you go for broke. That's it. You don't get nervous at all? No. I've been through hell already and back. What's a what's a fucking powder or something going to do to me? I remember when I was a kid, I used to do that those that THC crystal shit. That fucking... Uh, <laughs> that, that fucking... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be a fun night. That angel, that angel. What they used to call that Dean Del Rizzi? Angel, angel dust? dust. Angel dust. Angel dust shit, but they gave it different names. Like, I get scared for like eight minutes. Like I'd make believe. I didn't know what I made believe. Like I'd make believe. Like I didn't know what I was doing or something. And I'd get fucking hammered, man. Dean, you okay? Yeah, man. You need some water. You need some air. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't even give Dean an elbow. We didn't need to give him a start. Just Man. one hit of the sativa. What's it making you feel? Just fucked up. Good, good. Sit back. Relax. Sit back. We'll put some music on. You're the captain of your own enterprise. You Word. know what I'm saying? Word up, motherfuckers. But no, Nashville was great. The food was great. Yeah, you, you said you had Nashville hot chicken and it wasn't, wasn't your... Like, I, I've... I've it went right fucking through me. Oh, dude. no. It's not like spicy chicken like with wings, like hot ones. This is chicken with intense pepper on it. I had the mildly, and I took two bites of it, and it sprinkled on the, sk the skin. <laughs> the white went... meat is the white meat. The skin is fucking done. Oh, no. And I ate it, and I had to go to the bathroom <laughs> within 10 seconds. Like, it went down my esophagus into my stomach, and whatever I had in my stomach... It just went right through. It was like Drano. <laughs> I had to run to the bathroom at this place. It was disgusting. And then again, when I got to the hotel. I've never done that before. I, like, I had the first time forever in my whole life this weekend. I had diarrhea. Like, I didn't feel good. Like, I went shit like eight times this week. I don't know what I ate. God knows what you eat. No, see, here's the thing. Whenever I post food now, people, if I, I could post food at, like, Morton's, the Ritz-Carlton, and they're going to say it's lizard meat. Yeah, but you don't do it on those places. You keep <laughs> going back to lizard meat places, so that's why they know. I don't go you back don't to You learn your lesson. What did you eat before the diarrhea? I don't remember. Uh, fuck. Uh, Turkey Club, that was it, yeah. From where? Oh, you don't even want to know? Uh, fucking Barney's Beanery in Burbank. I was trying to get something quick. Oh, yeah, that was that was a bad idea. That was a but you know what I saw this weekend that was actually not bad. Uh, a, a Dog's Purpose. It's a stupid like it's a stupid movie. It's one of these movies that they're doing now that doesn't really have a story. But it was just nice. Like it was nice for anyone who had a and a pet as a kid. They I think I thought they did a good job. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to see movies that eight-year-olds go to, but what, where'd you go see this? Burbank. I don't know. You don't. You don't want to go see that movie. Go see what a dog does. <laughs> like I said, I don't know what's happened to you, though. What, what took me four years to create, you blew it in one fucking month. From a dog's life to Bonnie's beanery for a fucking turkey club. It's like one disaster after another with you, isn't What's it? What's wrong with the turkey club? <sighs> Not from Barney's fucking beanery. I didn't want a burger. I'm sorry. I should have well, got a Caesar salad. There's a thousand things in that mall to eat. There was nothing open. Like we, we tried to go to BJ's. That had a line out the door. We tried to go to Islands. That had a line out the door. So we, tr we tried, but it... Uh... Just shoot yourself next time. Because that's the luck you have. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoot yourself. It's never going to get better. It's only getting worse on a daily basis. I have a good time. I don't know. Turkey Club and the dog's life. Unbelievable. You mm -hmm. say I got to de deal with Dean Delray? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Delray is fucked up, Jack. One little hit. I, I knew the sativa was strong. True, man. <laughs> I didn't know. Is that You're hearing things, right? Like a, like a buzz. I got so high this fucking afternoon on that sativa. I heard buzzes. Like, I thought I kept playing a car engine and shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to smoke some more. I, that's, that's what we a, need to do. This is it's fucking... A body epic. fucking... I love that it's when Joey sees buzzer. someone going through, like, changes? the deepest changes that anyone's ever gone through, it makes you, like, jealous. You're like, I got to get... I got I to gotta get my shit together. How come I'm not going through those changes? 
Man. <laughs> this is going to be the night of the change. This is going to be the title of the podcast, Night of the Changes. Oh, my God. Yeah, this team is fucking good, man. Whew. That shit's a fucking... That's a, that's a hammer. Well, speaking of... Uh, well, while I have any coherency... It was weird. It's weird to me last night watching the Super Bowl because these are the players that I really fell in love with when I was in high school and middle school. Like I think Tom Brady was in '07 or something. That's when I started. High school was '07. Like, what what was it like for you guys seeing all these musicians getting older? Does it fuck with you at all? I guess they don't really retire like athletes do. Yeah, look at Joe Montana, man. I watched him slowly get old and. Break away, a king. You know? Yeah, no, they definitely start. I mean, I haven't seen. I, you see, some people fall too quickly with sports, but Tom Brady's still kicking it. But it's, uh, I don't know, it's weird. It's weird growing older. I like the under. The game fucking had me all fucked up last week because I like New England, but I know the NFC has. You don't get to the Super Bowl representing the NFC if you don't have an outstanding fucking strength compared to an AFC team. Yeah, no. <clears throat> I could see somebody folding because it was 60 points, the over and under. And the under came all the way in. To the fi- you know, Lee, if they would have scored a field goal in one, the under still would have came in because it was 59 and a half. That just, just goes to show you that they have it down to a science with football bookmaking, okay? Oh, it's scary over there. I just wanted to. I put $100 on the game on the total, the under, just to watch the fucking game. In a million years... I loved New England and the over. That was the obvious pick. That was the obvious pick. That's that was it right there. It was New England and Tom Brady's gonna put up fifty five fucking points by himself. I did not see it like that. Yesterday changed my world. You know, I'm reading a book called uh, I told Lee we're gonna preview it one day this month, uh, The War of Art, you know, and <clears throat> the distractions that we have as human beings and whatnot. If you looked, whether you were a football fan or not, if you have a minute, look at the last three minutes of that game and watch that man's face. They were down 28 to 3. At 28 the of the, to 3. And I talked to quarter, Lee and he yeah. goes, he still has a chance. I go, Lee, I don't know. Yeah, you were making fun of me. <laughs> He's not looking good. He's not looking good. And, then, and it shocked me because this guy, I've known him to be a tank. A white tank. He's the, the he's the strongest white guy that's ever walked this fucking planet, hands down. <laughs> Him and the Almond Brothers, hands down. When he, you know, the look on his face, and it just goes to prove what I always talk about on this show, man. When you want something really bad, it's there. It ain't gonna just pop up fucking mysteriously. But if you work for shit, it's there. All those things that you put in, those practice things that you do that you think don't really matter, you all saw last night in his performance. He was what's called unconscious. It happens with comedy. It happens with music. It happens with sports. It happens with a lot of things. When you're putting the, le- the best performance of your life on and you really are unconscious, you don't even know what you're doing. You're depending or you're not depending on anything. You're just doing what you've done for the last 20 years, the best that it's ever been. That's how you have to look at that situation. I looked at a great game last night. I mean, I woke up, and it was uh, a minute left in the second quarter. I was in shock, but I wasn't surprised. But all I have to say is what I got from that game yesterday was if you watch fucking Tom Brady, those last three minutes, watch his face, and he got sacked. And they were getting to him, and they were turning him around. It didn't matter. He didn't give up. He knew he was winning. He knew. Like, he knew. Watch the last... It was on again last night, and I watched it. Late night last night, I watched the last fucking quarter, last night till 1 in the morning. And that's what I was watching. That, that's what we strive to be. That's why they tell you to practice. That's why they tell you to do the same shit over again. He didn't throw a 90-yard bomb. He didn't fucking throw any yard bomb. He just did what he's been doing all his life. 10-yard, 12-yard darts. Zip, zip, zip. And those receivers, you got to take your hands off, their heads, your hats off to them. All of them. The Orlando Julius from the other fucking team made a catch. Oh, yeah. Uh, too. I mean, they were just, you know, I don't look at it 
lot of, if you're fucking shallow and ignorant, you could say that Atlanta choked. No, they didn't. They played a great game. They they were there all the way to the end. They just got I played by the fucking best in the game. There's no shame in that. They played a great season. They played a great game. They had them up against the fucking ropes. They just played against the fucking best there is. Yeah. Ever. As a coach and as a fucking football player. I mean, they they went up against the fucking goods. So for you motherfuckers that are giggling today, talking about how Atlanta choked and whatever, Atlanta didn't choke, man. Watch that game. That number 97, that defensive tackle. Oh, yeah, he's a beast. That he's a beast. They, they didn't choke. What they did was got outplayed, and that's how you have to look at that. You know, that's it. New England, my fucking congratulations. I wish I'd go to your parade tomorrow because I'd run up and hug fucking Tom Brady 18 <laughs> times. <laughs> me too. But I don't have the goods or the means. I got shit to do and people to see tomorrow. Maybe someday when me and Rich are millionaires, when me and Lee are fucking rich and famous, we could go again to see Tom Brady's son throw fucking five touchdowns in a game or some shit. Now, I, I made fun of it, and uh, it's easy to make fun of, but the Lady Gaga halftime show. Didn't I mean, watch it. I Turned it off. I watched the UFC Conda. And I, I'm I don't sure. watch football to see people dance and sing. Never right. have. And, it's, and I, I made the comment, like, it, it's not at all the NFL's fans, but just watching it last night, she did a good <clears throat> job. Like, she just, I've never seen a musician before run between, like, six songs and, like, take no breaks and costume changes. So it wasn't at all what I think the Super Bowl halftime show would be, and apparently, maybe I just don't watch the halftime show. Apparently they had Beyonce and everything in years past, so apparently that's what it's for. But just seeing her, like, that's what I try to look at when, I, when I'm when i watching something now that I don't like. I don't like, I feel like I'm, I get negative too much. Like, I, I want to at least try to look for something positive in it. So just to see her run, and, and, and people all over the internet today were saying that she killed it. All, all her fans were saying she killed it. So it's uh, it's just cool seeing someone <coughs> just doing that on like a, the biggest stage ever. I, I just didn't, I don't like that shit during halftime. It drives me crazy. You know, like I watched it one year, I forget who it was, Paul McCarthy sang like eight songs. Yeah, it was a few years two ago. two minutes or something. You know, it's just, I just want to see a fucking football game. I'm sorry. You might think I'm fucking retarded or something. I just want to see a fucking football game. Yeah, me I'm too. not in the mood to... I got invited to 20 things. I don't want to be around 20 people when I'm watching a fucking Super Bowl. I just want to watch the game and relax. I don't watch any other fucking game. I don't know why. I've always been like that. I think I went to one Super Bowl party. I saw Dip, and I'm like, this ain't for me. Yeah. I think I went to... A couple of years ago, me and my wife had just moved to the Valley, and this nice lady <laughs> invited us to an Oscar party. It was <laughs> the worst. Oh. It was the worst thing I have ever been invited to. Joey oh, had an Oscar. I'm fight. not from that school of thought, man. I've never really been from that school. Of, like the night, like the, the most shameful thing I heard was the night of the election. People were having like victory parties already planned for Hillary Clinton. Like people were buying new suits <laughs> and new clothes and shit. That's not what an election's fucking about, man. But see, that's what it was this year. You know, that's why we're in the in the state of shock that we are now but I've never really been like a a fake party type guy I want to go to a party to see the devil I don't want to go to a party to mingle and eat crackers I hate that shit with wives I fucking that shit drives me crazy it always has uh, it had, always has man I had the best day ever yesterday it was uh we were supposed to go and actually spend it with uh Vicky Peza and her husband but we like it just got turned around and I couldn't I, I'm so happy it did Paula made wings best wings I've had in LA. She's never made wings before. That shows you the shitty wings that I've been having in LA. It was amazing. She breaded the whole thing. It was great. Frank's Red Hot with butter. That was delicious. She made mac and cheese homemade. And then she made she made cookies. And I was sitting in my pajamas. It was a perfect day. It was, uh, it was one of those, I haven't had one of those in a while. Where I woke up today, I was like, fuck. There's nothing I would have changed about yesterday. For your fucking bum pajamas. Pajamas. You said I gotta deal with those. Yo, are you are you back to ground zero yet? Yeah, cocksucker. Woo. That was that was a fucking ride. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was like the claw just grabbed I me told you. and just threw me down, dude. It was like, hey, <laughs> I'm just like, Whoa. I'm you, bro. After jujitsu today, wow. I smoked a few bowls. I went in the back. 
I smoked two bowls and I did around my business and I was sitting there. I go, I am so fucking stoned from this fucking sativa. Yeah. That shit fucked me up. Like, dude, it knocked me out. I didn't up. think you smoked. You said you wanted hash. I don't have no... I, don't, I just... That hash is man-made. Unless I get it from the one I Jew, I don't fuck with it no more. Well, I didn't I didn't ride over. I rode Uber. So I was like, fuck it. I'll get, I'll get high tonight. Go with the ride with you guys. Man, that shit was just like... It was, it was like it grabbed me and threw me down like, hey, you ain't going nowhere. You know, that's the type of reefer that you smoke as a teenager. Yeah. And that really makes you appreciate music. Oh, like, I like that. That was it. music. I always like going to concerts. I loved all that stuff. But there's nothing better for me than to get really stoned and put earphones on and blast that music. Yeah. And, you know, if you hear a song that you really like and you get into it, you put it on again. You know, you're like, fuck it, put that on again. Jesus Christ, that sounded good. Like, Oh, you guys opened with that Maiden? Oh. And I was out cold. <laughs> Man, I, it was actually kind of scary for a minute. It was like, rah That fucking bass, that bass. Oh, Steve in the Harris beginning killing is it. It's fucking savagery. Man. First time you hear that, you're like, what the fuck is that? When all the guitars come in? Yeah. When, yeah. I, when that album came out in 81, that wasn't the type of music I listened to. Like, my farthest out was like Black Sabbath, right. Led Zeppelin, you know, maybe Deep Purple if I was in the mood. But when I first heard that, I was like, there's something about that shit. That, I still listen to that album. Oh, me too. I'll put the whole album on and do shit in the room and, oh. you know, and move around. Iron Maiden with Bruce Dickerson has never really grabbed me. Yeah. I cannot lie to you. I, I, 666, the number of the beast, and run to the hills and all that stuff. And I know they have a plane now, and they yeah, do yeah. great numbers. Yeah. They, they've just never really been for me. I do not know why. Yeah. I love that fucking uh, number of the beast record, man. That that song, 22 Acacia Avenue. Oh. That's a good song. That's oh, a good jam. Right? The album is good. I like oh. I just never really bought into the whole thing. I got what yeah. they were doing. By the time they started coming out with 666, The Number of the Beast, I had already seen The Devil. You're not impressing me, cocksucker. You better, yeah. you better, you want to impress me, go get The Devil's Boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. By the time they came out with Number 666, The Number of the Beast, what year was that? I don't know, man. Run to the Hills is 83. Like eight, oh, oh, yeah, that's it. 83, because I saw him at uh, Day in the Green. With Foreigner. Isn't that crazy? Oh, no, it was Heart. They played with Heart. Like crazy. I'm going to tell you something, man. People goof on Foreigner. Oh. There's a couple jams. The first album is me all the way. Oh, yeah. I fucking love the first album. That uh, Long, Long Way to Home. Oh, that and one's great. There's a couple jams Feels on Feels Like the First Time, is that on there? Feels Like the First yeah. Time's on there, too. They opened oh. up for the Stones when I yeah. saw them one year. And in 78, maybe they opened up for the Stones. Right. 79, 8, I don't know, one of those fucking years. And I'll tell you, I, you wanted not to like them. You thought they were a little on the pop side. Yeah. But they are pretty fucking good. Oh, I love I them. I want to talk to you about something before I forget that we were watching before this to explain to people. You know, oh, yeah. I was there with my own eyes when I saw Eddie Van Halen at the garden destroy that guitar and Black Sabbath had to try to follow him. Yeah. Uh, I think years later I saw Van Halen again. By that time I had grown a hatred towards, not a hatred, but a dislike to, after uh, Women and Children First for some reason, Yeah. I didn't like David Lee Roth no more. He, yeah? He had worn me out. That poster? Yeah, oh, that one. getting chained up. Oh, Women and Children, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, they won me over with in '81 with uh, fair warning. Fair warning yeah. just destroyed my insides yeah. of fair warning. Crusher, and then I don't know what they put on after fair diver warning. down. Diver down, which was diver Kinda, down. Yeah, yeah. That was man down, man <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. And then after that, that was it. '84, the big one. '84. Okay, that after one. diver down was '84. Yep. And then after '84, they broke up. Yep. That was it. Sammy comes in. Yeah. Now, the I still remember being at the Crestwood Hotel in Snowmass Village yeah. and sitting in employee housing. I was 21, and there was a couple other people in the room that were 20 or 21, but there was this guy that was 27, 
that was like trying to be cool, you know what I'm saying, like 28, trying to hit on 21-year-old girls, and I got into an argument with him that night. I still remember this as clear as day, but he was one of those guys, like, we were watching something, we were smoking pot, and he came in with, like, with a case of beer to be cool. Yeah. And he's like, I can't wait for Hagar and Van oh. Halen, Van Hagar to get together. <sighs> oh. And, like, two of us looked at him, like, shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, who gives a fuck, old man? Like, get the fuck out of here, trying to be <laughs> cool. He was trying to hit on one of the girls. I'm looking at him going, I'm not even excited about that. Yeah. Like, I'm more excited about the Coke that's coming getting delivered over here in 10 minutes. I don't give a fuck about Van Hagar or whatever yeah. the fuck he was Yeah, yeah, about. yeah, right? I was so into that Eat Him and Smile record. I brought the Spanish one tonight. Now, that was his first yep. album without uh, Van Halen. Yeah. What's on there? It's got, like, Yankee Rose. Uh, it's got that... Uh, uh, Shy Boy. It now, has, at that time, Stevie Vai was playing. With yeah. Him. It was him Billy and Stevie Sheehan. Vai. Yeah, he had yeah. a great fucking band. Oh, great. Great fucking that. band. Yeah. Great band. Killer. And it was so weird. Like, maybe th two years after David uh, David Lee Roth left, and I guess by that time they had put out two albums, yep. Sammy Hagar and him, people were begging for, that, for David Lee Roth to come back. And I got to be honest with you, I was one of them. Yeah. You know, I saw Sammy Hagar... In the worst position. I saw Sammy. You ever hear when people say to you, where'd you start? Oh, I started comedy in Milwaukee. Really? Do you go back there anymore? Nah. You know how it is where you start? Yeah. That's where people always remember you yeah, as. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I went to like a four concert bill one time. Like a four bill concert one time. It was Black Sabbath with Dio. Wow. <sighs> But before that, it was Sammy Hagar with Shaken Street. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. And opening the show yeah. was, who was Sammy Hagar's ex-partner? Montrose? Ronnie Montrose. Yeah. Was his band. Wow. So it was Ronnie Montrose, Sammy Hagar, and Shaken Street. Somebody else opened up the Sabbath. I don't remember who it was. And then it was Sabbath in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. Wow. One of my favorite places of all time. All four of those, huh? But the funny thing was that while David Lee Roth was on stage, this is when I, like, I had gone to Philly a lot. Like, I was always in Philadelphia. It always seemed like I was in Philly, 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 Philly. And the more I went to Philly, I got to be honest with you, I liked it. Yeah. It was Jersey only with something else to add yeah. to it. <laughs> and the one time I went to Philly, Sammy Hagar was up on stage just dying. I don't know what the fuck he was singing in 1983. Was it 83 with Dio and... No. It was 1980 with Dio and Sab at that tour. Yeah, 80. Yeah. 80 was 80, 80? I think 80 is the first one. Because 81 uh, was Sabbath. I mean... Yeah, look that up. Heaven and Hell. The Heaven and Hell tour? Yeah. yeah. Well, whenever that was, yeah. that's when I saw Sammy Hagar yeah. and then Ronnie. But then I saw Ronnie Montrose again open up for ACDC. Oh, yeah. Later on, no, maybe uh, two or three years after that, maybe. I don't know. With his band Gamma? At the Nassau Coliseum. Oh, man. April 17th of 1980. Yeah. 80. So they that, started that this is the first time they ever had this, this uh, with Dio. With Ronnie James are you Dio. On, on your Wikipedia? No, no, no. Dean, can you check this out to make sure I'm not checking out? Uh, no, no, that's it. That's it. No, no, but if you're on Wikipedia, it'll tell you that okay. who the opening bands were on the tour, shit like oh, that. Yeah. All right, let me check Wikipedia. But they were, people were spitting on their fingers. They couldn't spit far enough at Sammy Hagar. Oh. So they were spitting on their fingers and oh. flicking their fingers. Oh. And the spit was coming up on Sammy Hagar and he's trying to dodge oh. it. Oh. <laughs> Oh my spit flickers. Spit flickers. Oh my up god. That's how disgusting oh. they were spit flicking them and shit. <laughs> and spit was coming from every fucking angle at this poor Oh bastard. my god. <laughs> Hilarious, dude. And it wasn't for a while there. Yeah. I know what some people at home are thinking. I know there's some savages at home right now going, Joey, what are you retarded? It was Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah. Because Blue Oyster Black Cult and, Blue and Black and Blue Tour. Yeah, yeah. And which was great. I didn't see it, but I thought it was a great concept. Yeah. I always liked, let me tell you something, some Enchanted Evening. 
Oh, great. By Blue Oyster Cult. Kick out the jams, brothers and sisters. That's how it opens. I love oh, it. Oh, my fucking God. And then, there's something in the middle, and there's Godzilla. Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. Guys, you want to listen to a good live album? The cover's crazy. Oh, scary. my God. Some magician. The Reaper. The Reaper. Was he's the Reaper going down the front. Oh, up. my God. Some Enchanted Evening. Yeah. By, uh, who are we talking Blue about? Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster Cult. Oh. Dude. What's up, dog? You looking at me all bug eyed and shit. What are you feeling, Lee? I just feel really speedy right now. Yeah. Really speedy. Yeah. Right. I'm just glad I'm coming. Once we finish I'm the podcast, back. you can do a couple fucking jumping jays. <laughs> Fuck. I, could, I can kill speed. But I can kill I had my pajamas on during the Super Bowl. Lee, did you smoke any of that weed? I uh, did everything else but that weed, apparently. Ooh, try that out. Man. Give him a little fucking lung this'll burner. This will get you cross eyed, Oh, sucker. man. Yeah, this, you want to try it? This is the shit. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'm we'll already crossed out as it we'll is. We'll fill it up to the top here for Lee. <laughs> this shit is. We'll make a special. Man, that weed is strong. What kind is it? It's called 24 Carat from Perennial. 24 Carat? Fucking 24 Carat knock your ass out. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I was so stoned a little while me? ago. I couldn't even talk. <laughs> I couldn't talk at all. You know? I was just looking at Lee switching his fingers back and forth, and I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah, everyone thinks I'm having a panic attack when I do this. I'm just switching the cameras. There you go, so, buddy. So he is having a panic attack. Wait till he takes three hits of this fucking monster yeah. goon here. This is the real deal tonight, people. Monday, February 8th. Me awesome. February 6th, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're fucking around. Yeah, some enchanted evening's good. Oh, yeah. Then they had another album after that. Um... Yeah, they had the one with Don't Fear the Reaper on, which was, uh, they got, what do they got? A Agents of Fortune. Hold on, let me look. Man, I'll tell you the good ones. Okay. Blue Oyster, Blue Oyster Colt. <coughs> Uh-oh. <coughs> what happened to Lee? <laughs> That's what happened to Lee. <laughs> <laughs> That shit's a killer, Lee. This fucking reefer. I tell you, this weed is crazy. Oh, my God. Look at him. He's got drool from his beard. Look at him. Oh. Look at him. He looks like Sinbad the Sailor. Give me that fucking pipe. Uh. I'm smoking that all the way down. Oh, yeah. You want D another hit of this? Dean, Ooh. I can see where you went. Oh, my God. All right. It's a lung killer. <coughs> it lit my lungs on fire. Okay, here's the one, Joey. Uh, okay, you got Fire of the Unknown Origin. What year? Okay, that is, uh, let's see, uh, 81. That's, the that's a good one. That's a good one. That's you know, a good one. You know what it's got on it? Look, it's got burning for you. Remember, I'm burning, I'm burning for, burning for you. It's got that heavy metal song, remember? I love burning for you. The guitars on there yeah. are fucking tremendous. Sick, right? This is a great album. Oh, it's got their best song ever. Put this on, Lee. Veterans of Psychic Wars. Oh, shit. Yeah, Blue Oyster I'm Cult. I'm telling you, man. That's the song. If you're not into Blue Oyster Cult, you should take a fucking second there, because I got into them by mistake. I used to buy coke from this dude, Randy Mergle. Oh. God rest his soul. Oh, my God. And he used to play this album every night when we were gacked up to the fucking gills. Oh. Circa 1981. Um, we, unbelievable. I was a junior in high school, staying at his house till 6 in the morning, snorting. I'd run home, take a shower. Here it is. Remember this one? It was on that movie, Heavy Metal. Yeah, it's on Heavy Metal.
killer, dude. That's, I forgot all about that. It's so good. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta get back into my fucking memory vault, vault of music. I'm missing a bunch of shit that I uh, just lost over the years. Abstract shit that I used to be into. <clears throat> yeah, this to me used to be like abstract metal. I never saw them live. Totally I, abstract. I never saw them Blue Boys to Cult oh, live. I just God. saw the videos. Yeah, I've watched some footage on YouTube, but I loved the music. But the live album they put out oh. destroyed me. Some about. You know, we get into this conversation all the time because we're both students of the 70s and the 80s. What the fuck's it going to take? But who's going to do these live bands? Who? Yeah. I don't want to see anybody live or hear anybody live unless it's somebody that we grew up with that knows how to do a fucking live album. Yeah. I mean, Pearl Jam, you know. Yeah. If uh, I, Now, Soundgarden is back. Yeah. Yep. Soundgarden, they're back, man. And... Uh, you know, there's some good live shows out there right now, like uh, Rival Sons, dude. So great. I brought that record over. Uh, uh, Queens of the Stone Age get Queens ready. of the Stone Age. They get, oh, those guys kill are it. Are there Armenians? No, that's System of the Down. They kill it, System too. System of the Down. That band crushes. They crush, too. Oh, I saw them at the Forum, like, last year. It was, like, the 100-year uh, anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. And they did a big tour, thirteen places. It was unbelievable. Yeah, they were huge. They were my. I, I was really into them in high school. System of a Down. So great, dude. I mean that that aerial song, you know, aerials in the sky. That tune is killer. Oh my god. Now what's the other band? It's not System of the Down, but the other guy. Lincoln Park. No. Rage Against the Machine? No. no. Before that, you said there's another band. Oh, there Rival was, Son? Or, or Rival no. Son, then you yeah. said a second band. They're the ones that went on Anthony Bourdain's show. Oh, Queens of the Stone Queens Age. Queens of the Stone oh, Age. Yeah. They're great. They're, so they're great. doing a record right now. A new one. Oh, I can't even wait. Last one was incredible. They're like, to me, like a kind of like if Zeppelin was would be now, you know? Like they, they're really intricate and cool, but bluesy. Acidy, you know, all over the board. It's punk rock. <laughs> oh, fucking great! I mean, my, my new favorite band is Hero Junior. Yeah, you but, love them, right? Yeah, but but now, what are the other bands to look out for? Oh man, uh, let's see. I'm loving this. That one, that Gorgira. I was that telling one jam by Hero Junior. Yeah, destroys me. I forget the name of it right now with the little girl singing the song and shit, and she's like lip syncing. Yeah. That's a great fucking, that's like a world class fucking jam. I also like those people Rogan liked. The girl? Honey, honey. Honey, honey. I like her. Yeah, honey, honey. I like her. I like her. I think there's some something there for her when you don't know. You can't predict the fucking yeah. future. I think there's just so many bands now, like so many. I can't keep up with the younger bands. Yeah, you yeah. Know, people send me seven. stuff. Yeah. Some stuff is fucking phenomenal. Some stuff is so f fucking bad. That's it. Some stuff is so bad, it's unlistenable. Oh, yeah. What cool. song? What, what, what? It's called Anger Room. With open eyes and in between. The fucking guitars. Sounds like a blue, black crowish. Yeah. But fucking like what the black crows would sound like today. Yeah. That guitar player is a student of the game. Yeah. Listen to how raw it's his great, guitar is. Great, great riffs. Great riffs. Just burn on. You know, it just grabs you. That's it's, what you need, a good riff, man, to grab you. Somebody, there's people who send me different music. Yeah. And some music is fucking phenomenal. I just don't. Like, if they send me something, I'll look them up on YouTube, 
and I'll look at some YouTube stuff, and if I get three songs of this, of the Dynamite, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. These guys are great. I just got to figure out how to download it and all yeah, that. Yeah. I don't know how to do yeah. that. So I forget about it. Yeah. Do I you, forget about it. That's all it is. It's yeah. not that I don't like it. It's I forget about it. I got a thousand things on my fucking plate, yeah. you know? Yeah, man. I liked like 30 different bands last year, and I had to keep notes on them because I kept going, what was that one band called? Oh, yeah, this band. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that. I, you know, I got to go refind it. Uh, now, do you still go to the whiskey and the... No, I don't go to that unless it's uh, something I want to see. Like I saw uh, Udo last week there from Accept, Balls to the Wall. Udo came and did a whole set of uh, Accept songs. It was insane. Oh, man. All that shit. Fast How as a shark. How much there? I think it was 25 or something. So worth it. I couldn't believe how metal it was. It was like an old school metal show. They had the the moves, you know, like, okay, on this part of the song, we're going to go up here, you know? It was like, well done. Udo up there in his camo pants. You got your balls to the wall, man! You know? That's nuts that you go to those places. I'm going to have to go with you one night. You got to come out. I, I can't. It's just fun for like an hour. You know? I can't go to like a big show. Like the big yeah. shows already I'm done with. But I want to go to small shows to see the smaller bands. Yeah, I think yeah. that I started thinking about comedians. I started thinking about you won't see the good comics on Comedy Central. You'll see the comics they like. Like if you're into comedy, yeah. you're not going to see Bill Hicks. The full spectrum that you deserve to see by just watching Comedy Central. And I'm not putting bad, uh, I'm not saying anything bad about Comedy Central. Could you put, say, put, say the same, same thing for like Netflix or who, wherever? Right no, now okay. I'm just talking about Comedy Central. Okay. So I grew up listening to PLJ, right? Let's yeah. put an NEW. Great sources of whatever. But this is what I've been thinking at the age of 54, which I'll be next week. They were biased. They're biased like I am. They're playing music that they kind of like, or they really like, or they know somebody from the band, blah, 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 blah. But I don't think we're hearing the best of them. It's like today, when I'm driving down the street and I hear rock and roll ain't noise pollution. That's yeah. the fucking last ACDC song I want to hear. Yeah. Where's fucking Night Prowler? Yeah. Where's fucking uh, What's Next to the Moon? Where's yeah. fucking... Uh, kicked in the teeth Kicked again. in the teeth. Where's uh, the other one on, on Let There Be Rock that is just such a Go dangerous... Go down. No, it's yeah. such a dangerous song. The, that, uh, good enough, smoke me no cigarettes. Oh, yeah. I never drank much, much booze, booze what's but the, what's I'm the, only a What's man. the chord on that? I what's, overdose on you. Overdose. But yeah. What's down, down, down? Dun, dun, yeah. dun. Then Angus comes yeah. in. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, yeah. boom, I love boom, that, right? boom. Dog, I want to hear Overdose. Oh, I want to hear, song. for those about the rock, we salute you. Like, I want fucking, you know, I don't want to hear that song. Yeah. Play but, some deep cuts. But the stations and the advertisers let you, you know what I'm saying? They have yeah. to make a living. And there's yep. some music. And, that, and that's on that level. On like serious or something, Jim Florentine's very good. Yeah, awesome. I listened to Eddie Trunk today. I listened to Norton. I listened to all those guys. Great. Do I agree with all their stuff? Not really. But I'll tell you one thing about Florentine. He buys what he sells. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like Jim buys what he sells. And I can't take that away from him. Whether or not I agree with his music, 50% of it, I give him props. He takes his son to concerts and shit. He's out there banging it out fucking a couple nights a week, watching bands I didn't even know existed. Yeah. And me and him are close to the same age. So I got to get I got to hand them props, you know. But uh I think sometimes I got poisoned with what not poisoned, like I got introduced to the Who and Led Zeppelin and and the Beatles and stuff like that. But guess what? I guarantee there was a couple other mother love bones that I didn't get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, everybody, yeah. Th everybody always thought that Soundgarden and Pearl Jam were Seattle Sound. No, they weren't. It was mother love bone. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, Alice in Chains blows me away. They still do. But mother love bone blows yeah. me away. Yeah. The first Soundgarden album, 
Oh, still blows me away. Yeah. Pro Jam's album is great, but it was very commercial. Yeah. It was, you know, that whole fucking album was very, like, like lately, I, I don't know what it is, I've been hearing Alanis Morissette every fucking day. Oh, yeah. From 1995, Jagged Little Pill, that's yeah, the name yeah. of the album. Yeah. Every day I hear her on either 80s music, classic vinyl, every, I think she owns Sirius. She's so rich. Imagine, man, how rich she is. Just, just from that album. Oh, yeah, that was like one of the biggest selling records ever. For a while, it was like, wow. For like one year, it was on the charts. And, like, and she can survive off radio plays. Like totally. that, that amount of money. Oh, wow. I knew the guys in Boulder who were police cops. Yeah. The guys that listen to the radio. Yeah. And monitor the music and see how much you get paid and all that shit. they like residuals. I knew those guys. There were like four of them. They got that car wash. Their yeah. firm got that car washed at the puddle. That's classic. So it's kind of weird. So no. Lately, I've been feeling like maybe I got the same raw deal for music that people are getting today for comedy. They just think that the comedians on Comedy Central is all that exists, you know? Yeah. So I want to see some different fucking angles. I mean, where? how would you guys find new bands before the internet? Because now I'm imagining YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff. But how would you, when you guys were 20... Finding Word of bands. mouth, man. Word of mouth. That's what was so amazing. It How was, did we find music before yeah. the internet? Word of mouth. This is my brother. Yeah. Like I've always told you, there's no Yelp. I don't believe Yelp. I wouldn't go on Yelp for anything. I know Dean. If Dean comes to me and says, I had some elk the other night and it was great. I don't like elk, Dean. So I know that him and I don't match. But if Dean says to me, I went to Rudy's, I went to Chan's, and these are my restaurants, I know I can take his opinion for food and for movies and for whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So you had certain friends. You had the friends that were the people who wanted to be cool. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. They bought the black T-shirts at the concerts every night, and they let you know they went to the show. Yeah, and, You yeah. know, those fucking clowns. Yeah. And then you had people like Dean Dell, right? They just went out four nights a week, drank, got a package of fucking blow. And rocked out, really rocked out with a band. You Fierce. know what I'm saying? Yep. Really rocked out with a band, you know? Big fucking difference. Yeah. So I trust Dean. If Dean comes up to me and he goes, Dog, I went to see Sabbath the other night, but I got to tell you something. The warm up band destroyed them. Thank God for Sabbath. They only played four songs. Yeah. If they would have done eight, Sabbath would have had to run home and pack their bag. Guess what I'm doing tomorrow? Not even. As soon as Dean tells me, I'm going to go, Dean, you got their music? No. Let's go to Sam Goody. Let's buy the album with a cassette or the 8-track. Let's go. Yeah. We go. We buy it. We wrote. We get a nickel bag, seven joints for five bucks. Dean, what time does your mom get home? Eight. Guess we're going to your house. Yeah. We'll smoke the pot outside and we'll put the fucking music on. And that was it. Are there people who would do that, like spy <coughs> almost on the opening band? Because most people didn't go to the opening band, right? Yeah, well, you know, though. He always went to the yeah. opening band. Yeah. I have a feeling since he's 14, he's gone to the opening band. Yeah. When I was coming up, they told me not to go to the opening band, so I didn't go. Until yeah. one day I went. I got there early, and I go, why don't I come here? Yeah. It's like when you go to the UFC in Las Vegas. Don't watch the undercards? No. When you got to, No. People watch the undercards. I got you. No, 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 no. When you go to the UFC anywhere but Vegas, I got you. people are there. Let's say the fight started at 4, they're there at 2 in the afternoon. Yeah. Two in the afternoon, they're there. Full on event. Drunk already, ready to fucking get high, ready to have a good time. When you open up the doors, when you go into an event in a foreign city like Milwaukee or New Jersey or uh, Texas, the places are packed by the time the prelims are on. Go to a fucking fight in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> fucking show uh, the the main card is on, the main fight, and people are walking in. Like, you're sitting in the seat yeah. going, look at me. Yeah. Yeah. I got third row. And all of a sudden, people are like, you uh, actually showed for this? Like, yeah, really? Yeah. You got some fucking pair of balls. Four fights later. God, I'm sorry about this bottle. You got another water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lee, you need some water over there? I need, I need everything you got, so, sure. <laughs> Here you go, Lee. All the help I can get at that, this point. That weed's crazy, right, Lee? You know, I've explained to Lee. <laughs> Lee and I once, when Lee and I started working together, I got Lee really high one day. <laughs> and I was on a roll in my living room. This is before the baby was ever even a thought in that home. Okay. <clears throat> and, I, and I wanted Lee to understand that 
you know, without Twitter. I want you to think of a, of a world without Twitter, without Facebook. What's the name of the band you went to see the other night? Well, Dean sent me a picture. No. Yeah. You know, all Dean knows that on the way out, he looked at their schedule on their fucking bass drum. Yeah. And it said Boston, yeah. October. So I don't know what you got to do. You got to get this band, whatever. You know, like that's that, that was it. Yeah. There was no website. You didn't go back to your hotel room and go, oh, my yeah. God, I love the band. Let's see where he's from. You knew nothing. The name of them was Led Zeppelin. Yeah. That's it. You had to buy the album to get the information off the album or get the Cream magazine yep. to read about them. That was it, Lee. That was it. But I still remember Lee and I putting on rocks. Yeah. And me going, Lee, sit down for a second. There was a rumor going around. I stood, go. I remember this playing this fucking day at 38th Street Park in North Berg and somebody fucking telling, like talking, the older kids talking. 76, I'm 13. Yeah. 12, you know. No, yeah, yeah, I was 12 when they were talking about it because yeah. they were saying, Aerosmith's done. Some kid was saying, Aerosmith's the best. And they're like, fuck you, Aerosmith's <laughs> done, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Aerosmith, they're, they're junkies, they're done, they're breaking up. And all of a sudden, like three months later, they release Rocks, which is basically a fucking masterpiece yeah. of now. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember sitting there even then going like, how did people know they're on heroin? Yeah. Like, how did people in yeah. North Bergen, New Jersey, know that Stephen Tyler and Joe Perry, which they were during the thing of Rocks, if you read that book, yeah, I forget what the name of that. They were on not only heroin, they were on fucking major league heroin. They had a Chinese guy living at the house making it. <laughs> like they had a guy fucking at the house. Like they were into it. Yeah. How did my friends know? You know, how did the word get out? Now, let me ask you a question. Who gave a fuck about Aerosmith in Boston in 1975? Yeah. You had the Boston Celtics. Really? They didn't? Well, you think, why would I? Did you see what Boston looked like last night? Yeah. Did you see pictures of the street? Yeah. Okay. Go check if the Boston Celtics won the fucking championship in 75. The Red Sox didn't, won, didn't no, win, win no. but they were good. Yeah. And New England wasn't that good. No, maybe they were. They went to the Super Bowl one time, New England, I think in 85, and they lost. Do you mean? With Andre Tippett and those guys, they lost. But Boston was the city that was dominated by sports. Yeah. yeah it wasn't 85 the Bill Buckner? 75. 75 was Bill Buckner? No, no. 75 is what we're looking for. Oh, you're looking for 75. I'm sorry. I thought you said 85. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay. They had 56 wins. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to see if I'm they... I'm telling you. The Celtics, I don't know if they won that year, but they were in a bad team. The Red Sox didn't win that year, but they were in a bad team. The Bruins m yeah. maybe w were winning, but it was such a city that was dominated by sports. Aerosmith was just a little part of that city. They were nothing. They yeah. were just five dirty white dudes <laughs> playing fucking in the song, you know, and yeah. playing in different bars around the you know Providence. Yeah. So you're saying if like they were from like <laughs> Milwaukee, they'd be like the biggest thing ever. Like uh, just just to pick Milwaukee out of them. Well, Milwaukee at the time had the motherfucking Bucks and okay, shit. Then, uh, the, the Brewers. Well, I know what you're wherever. saying. I know what you're saying. But but just something about Boston. Boston had all four sports lately. Right. They, it's yeah. really rough to give a fuck. Plus plus Boston College. You know all those Boston college schools up there. They have a lot of sports up there. Yeah. For them to even give a fuck a little bit about music, and for this little band. To reach out nationwide with nothing, Crazy. They didn't put, you know, they put bands on midnight special yeah. those days, and Don Kirsten's rock concert. It's not like they came on the Tonight Show. No, never. Aerosmith never went on. There, there was, was no Jimmy Kimmel. There was no band. There was none of that shit on on Carson. Nothing like that, Lee. So you really had to dig deep for information. Wow, that's crazy. You had to like. There was no Jimmy Kimmel. So and it, nobody was there before Jimmy Kimmel putting bands on at night. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. So how much of a band's album sales were just tr people trying to figure out if they liked them? Well, you uh, know, you just hear them at a party. Like, somebody put the record on. You'd be like, well, who is that? Who the fuck is that? Yeah. And they go, oh, man, I just got this. This is the new such and such, you know? And you're like, oh, God, I got to get that. Now, that's a good point you brought up, Lee, about the... How many people bought music 50-50 shot? Lee, let me ask you a question. Okay. If you're walking in the store and you see this album cover, Def Leppard High and Dry, it's a bunch of guys looking up 
and then in the middle, a forced picture in there with a guy about to jump in the pool, hanging upside down pretty much, and the pool has water in it. That intrigues your mind. Okay, that's 1981. Look at the album cover behind Dean Delray. Look at that fucking album cover. I would give you four yeah. ninety nine just <laughs> for that. Just for the Satan artwork. Look at yeah. Led Zeppelin's two artwork. Look what that looks like 50 years later. Yeah. So do you understand me, the effort that was put in to an album, yeah, why absolutely. the music industry has fallen to shit? Because you just made a great point, Lee. If I walked into a store and I was about to buy Led Zeppelin too, because my brother had it, but I saw this. Yeah. Dean, who's Def Leppard? Yeah. Dog. I saw them open up for Judas Priest last year. They fucking killed it. That album yeah. cover looks fucking cool. Look at that house. It looks like the valley. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm going to buy that for four ninety nine. Yeah, Lee, you're right. Record sales. Did, look at these covers, Lee. How can you walk past this cover? And Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, if you turn it around, yeah. it's, it's right there. The front is the devil getting him. That's you tonight, Lee. Look at yeah, yeah, let me pretty see. much. Let me see what I got. Devil's got you, yeah, Ali. The devil has it. Uh. If you look at that album cover, <laughs> the if you look at that album cover, what's really unique about that album cover is the front is the devil already at the house. But if you look at the back, the devil gone, and you're in the bed, and like people are talking to you, <laughs> like, bro, you were in deep, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 with the 666 six, 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 six out front but if you turn it around yeah. you'll see that <laughs> it's a guy and his family's around him yeah. and they like put towels on his head and they're like dog you were deep last night don't <sighs> do this again you had a scared story you smoked that sativa you smoked that Joey Diaz sativa oh my god we got some fucking great albums this week oh. like I said uh your boy gave you this album here. Yeah, that's great. Lamb of God, which is a fucking great album. I didn't yeah. know. Willie Nelson, City of New Orleans, The Essential Johnny Cash, yeah. and Southside Johnny with La Bamba's Big Band. You like this stuff, Dean? I don't know this. I know him, but I mean, I don't know this record. It's the uh, it's the songs by your boy there. Of Tom Waits. Oh, Tom Waits. Wow. I Great haven't heard of this. Moon. There you go. See? Wow. Oh, this is cool. Listen to it. Let me know what you think. All right, thanks. That's from Dante Gazzini, the man of motherfucking steel. This is cool. He also sent me a CD. I almost crashed my fucking car listening to it. I don't know what the fuck he's got. He's got noises and people running around. What's up, Lee? How, what are you feeling, dog? Talk to me. It's actually starting to calm down, which is nice. It's, <laughs> calm, it's calming down. What's it? It's just playing. It's, no, no, no. It's not calming down. Okay, it's not. It's just playing games. It's a dragon. It comes and goes. Okay, well, right now it's calmer. It comes and goes. We'll do another drop in a second. No, straight no, up. No, yeah, no, another no. drop. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's, a, that's a time when uh, Dean and Mr. Bozio came on, and I, I held my puke until the end of the, the pod. No, we can't double. Where are your t shirts? Did you leave some t shirts here? They're in the trunk. Care. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you feel the edibles, Lee? I could feel, I could feel the. Uh, the 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 demon the 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 hit of weed I took that weed was so strongly imagine me I I took a hit dog I didn't know what happened to you oh man and I you, was you're still stoned yeah, oh yeah totally stoned. but now it's just norm, normal normal stuff you, know you what started I mean? staring you didn't say nothing you had me scared for a minute I couldn't even see at all it was just like I was just like complete paralyzed the right side of my body. Wow. And then I just started sweating. It was like I got bit by a spider. For real. Like all of a sudden I was like, I can't move my right side. <laughs> I, I saw you losing it because I saw you like looking at the water bottle and yeah. like two minutes later you went. Tch. Yeah. I just saw the whole process. Like, I'm gonna get that water bottle. I'm gonna get that water yeah, bottle. Yeah, right. I was like trying to reach it, but my arm wouldn't move. 
It was like a full blown snake bite or a spider bite. It just I wanted to see where this drop was going to take us tonight. Yeah, right? it's pretty good. I like it now. Do, it's t- Wednesday. And we're going to put three drops. No, we're not. What are you Q. talking about? <laughs> and we're going to do an all night oh podcast oh. from nine to three and have different oh. people pop in. Isn't that what we're doing now? No, not really. Uh. This was just a warm up to Wednesday. Uh. Yeah, this was just like spring training. This is Wednesday. as deep as I've ever been and I ever want to go. What are you No, 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 no. This is nothing. Uh, hilarious. I'm going to take over every sense with with the Sid. Every time I come on, <laughs> you guys go next level. I'm going to put three drops in each one. I got some Sid in the, in the tub right now. Yeah? With Where'd you get it? Sugar cube. Don't worry about it. No, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? But like, that's so cool. And, I, and I've been baking it, processing it. I, I gave Lee the light ones tonight. Uh, but Wednesday, we went through the old uh, ones. I'm sick on Wednesday. I can already tell. We'll, we'll do it uh, Thursday. No worries. Uh, we'll wait till you get back. Uh, oh, shit. We'll do three drops, uh, 9 o'clock. Whoever pops up, I'm going to invite some people. Like, <laughs> three gonna, drops, 9 o'clock. The new it. name. Tip the, top, dick. Yeah. It's like smoking dope on Periscope with Uncle Joey. That's it. That's the new show on Periscope. Three drops. TikTok. We're going to go deep, Lee. Lee, this is it. This is this is going to break my fucking concentration. This is going to get my uh, creative state back. I, I, I really enjoy it. See, the, my issue with acid is just the buildup. It freaks me out. It scares the shit out of me because... Of everything, I guess that like where acid is supposed to do to you, and then you fuck with me a little bit, and you know my brain just works like a fucking hamster wheel, and once you put just like a little bit of like doubt that I'm gonna start going crazy, he he calls me at, like six a.m. He's like, oh, it ate through another Tupperware today. Oh, I can see lights when I when I close my eyes. So that's, yeah, we're good, we're good. This is gonna be a fun one. Um. But yeah, you just start, and it, it just causes a lot of anxiety. But I'm ha- like, I really like this is what I like about acid. Wait till I turn oh, the lights just, off and just, leave you in here uh, by yourself okay. and give you another oh. drop and shit. It's like after after like the build up <coughs> when when the build up is over, it's great. It's just like life. Lee. There's no build up if you, what are you buy talking? into. Do you see Lee? Do yeah. you see like when you're excited about a movie? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you come home. And you go, boy, that sucked. What made me go to that fucking movie? <laughs> well, the hype. Right. It's the same bullshit I do to you with the ass. Ain't nothing gonna happen to you. Ain't nothing gonna happen to you. <laughs> no matter, you know. I'm sick and fucking tired of this new America with their, with their fear and their, you know. <laughs> there's an age gap that just is scared of everything in this country. Yeah. They gotta go home and read a label and well, go online. Well, it's kind of scary, to be honest. Don't worry, <laughs> nothing of it is. The only fear is the fear that you put in your fucking mind. I used to do this shit after a. I started doing this shit heavy six months after I found my mother dead on the floor. Oh my god! Think of the visuals I would get at night with this shit. Wow! Think oh of man! The feelings. Think of the shit that would go through my head with this shit. But guess what? This little drug helped me cope with that tragedy in a weird fucking way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I kept eating it. I started selling it. Yeah. And I would sell two, three hundred hits a fucking week. Wow. But I'd eat two or three a night. How much is a hit back then? Yeah. I would pay 90 cents for it and I'd sell them for three dollars. Oh my two God. Two ten wow. a profit. Two ten a profit. I love it. I'm, I want to see that documentary I think comes out next week, Mr. Sunshine. About the two dudes that made the orange sunshine. Really? Yeah, the, the acid. The double barrel orange That's sunshine. The, yeah, the original orange sunshine. That's the name of an acid? Yeah. So what does that mean when you would name an acid? What does that do? It's a different feeling. So is it just, is it marketing or is it that you would? It's marketing. Okay. okay. So they would have like, <sighs> like that was liquid sit, right? But you don't know what the name of it is. It's all the same. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you buy it on a. On a piece of paper, right, Lee, it comes like this. Like if you came to my house tomorrow and said, "I want to buy a hundred hits," I give you a piece of paper. Okay, I got with you. what's that called? Perforation. Perforations. Yeah. In it. And once you counted all of them, like they would be, like say there would be five across and twenty down. Yeah. That'd be a hundred hits, and you'd have to take them all, either break them and put them into a piece of paper, but that would stick, and you would double up and give away hits, yeah. or you put them in aluminum foil. So you go out with aluminum foil and a little baggie, and you just sell aluminum foil. I put mescal in there, the yeah. little hits, the micro dots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had your micro dots, you had your your 
orange sunshine. You had your double barrel sunshine. Yeah. You had your four way acid. You had the window pane. Double you had window the pane. Double window pane. You had so many different types of acid. What are we on tonight? Debt. That's what we're on tonight. <laughs> 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 What, on the, what, what color did you see up there when you looked and it hit you? It was a bat. That's what I saw. It was a, a bat? bat? Yeah, he's been. You've been teasing me for ten years about bats and the rats in the trees, and I saw something flying. That's killer. <sighs> that's perfect. That, that's how you know it's a good one because well, it's a closed door. So I'm telling yeah. you, Lee, this shit was the best. You know why? Because I used to go home afterward, and the shit you think about, the shit that goes through your mind. It really is amazing. I understand how the government did testing on people with this and yeah. shit. Oh, yeah, There's right. There's been thousands of different experiments with you're this doing, shit. You're yeah. just continuing all that testing. Yeah, but I tested <laughs> on myself. And like, I'm some fucking puke that gives it to some fucking guy <laughs> yeah. that's in jail for five dollars a hit and watches him scratch his head for six fucking hours. No, 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 no. But it's I could see the effects and the benefits of it. Yeah. I'm telling you, at that age... It pushed my mind a little bit and made me be a little bit more fucking out, not outgoing, but... Understanding? Understanding. Like, I used to see some dark shit at night, guys. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, man, they're saying that, you know, they're doing those low doses of uh, psilocybin, you know, that's uh, curing depression and all kinds of stuff. That's cool. You know? Like, each day taking a mushroom cap, like in a tablet form, and then being better. And you just build your tolerance after a week. For four days, totally. you'll trip a little bit, have yeah. diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, you'll be tip top toe magoo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't nobody stopping you. You're balanced, you're giggling, you're happy. Yeah. I see it. I really see it. I see this kind of therapy in a lot of fucking ways. And I lived it. It's not like I read about this. I yeah. lived it. Let's fucking look at the facts. Okay, I was a wounded deer. But. What? I was a wounded deer. I mean, I was, I was, I was damaged goods. Why were you damaged goods? Because I lost my fucking parent. It affected me. I was sideways, Lee. I was damaged goods. At that point, anybody could come take me. ISIS. <laughs> I could have joined Jonestown. I could have joined a cult. I could have joined a gang. I could have been persuaded because I was exactly how they want you. Jonestown. I was exactly how they want you. I worked myself back to being straight again and being knowledgeable. And yeah, I lost it with the thievery and the criminality and all that shit. It wasn't who I really was. But what got me straight in a lot of those senses was the thinking I'd do when I'd be high on acid of what my future was, of what I want. As stupid and as dumb as it sounds. You knew it. You did acid as yeah, a child. Yeah. You did it. And you said, yeah. do something to you the last two hours. Oh, yeah. When everybody Find else your went life. home. When yeah. everybody else goes home, it's you and your mind in, yeah. the, in a dark room. And sometimes you have weed, sometimes you have beer, but the result is the same. The, the, the thought keeps coming up over and over and over. Yeah. And it forces you to break the shit down. What am I going to do in this situation? And it, it would force it down for me. You know, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to say this shit. I had a situation where... My mother had just died. I was a wounded deer over it. I knew I was about to get thrown out of this house. And on top of all this, I was in love with this broad. And, bro, she just didn't fucking want to even get the first base with me. Oh, So man. whenever her and I would have an argument about something, I would put Black Sabbath yeah. uh, sabotage on her, And I'd yeah. take a hit of acid and turn the lights off. And I'd listen to both sides. And after that... I'd have the answer to all my problems. Uh -huh. <laughs> How uh -huh. crazy is that? Yeah, right. Let's Tony Bettley give you a breather there. Yeah. <sighs> da -da -da. Dun, da -da. I wanna be around to pick up the pieces.
I'm getting fucked. I make no promises. You what? I can make no promises on the noises front. What's going on, Dean Delray? Now that man. I told somebody the other day, somebody called me talking some shit about how things weren't working out for him. And I said, do me a favor. Do you follow Dean Delray? He goes, no, I don't. I go, follow Dean Delray. That's how you should be working. If you're not doing what Dean Delray's doing to the T, don't call me when you're doing that 90 days straight. Then come see me. That's cool. I can't divulge who I said that to. Uh, yeah. I think he went into shock when I said that to him. I go, look at his tweets. Look what he tweets. Look at his podcast. Look at his consistency. He talks about every show he's going to do, whether three people show up or one show. He don't give a fuck. He's relentless. <clears throat> I don't know if that comes with age because the person who called me is like 30. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's an experience thing that you know that it's a over and over and over again type of thing and you're out there working and something cracks eventually. It's better than sitting on the couch. Totally. But it's really great to see what you do, man. I'm really proud of you, bro. Yeah, man, thank you, dude. You're not sitting there looking for handouts. You're always hustling. You're always putting shows together. You know, there's people that think, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to wait till somebody takes me on the road and that's it. You're not, you either go on the road by yourself, you'll take a $100 flight, you'll sit under yeah. the plane, go to New York, sleep on the floor to do spots at the stand, which yeah, to me is just, you know, you, you do four spots a night and... I you even that. told me, you go, I'm looking for spots. They give me spots every night. I can't be mad at you for something like that. Yeah. It's the fucking, this whole game, whether it's music. Did you have the same work ethic for music? I did, man. Uh, w what's great about this is you if you have work ethic uh, or a drive and a couple don't in a band, then you got an extra load on your shoulders. But uh, with just comedy, it's just full on me, you know? So I don't have to uh, worry about anything. Like, I don't have to ask anybody if I need to go out and work or what. You know, like, band member-wise. You just know that it's an everyday fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Now, did you, you had the same work ethic for music all those years? Yep, absolutely. Sometimes I'd have the wind knocked out of me a little bit, you know, and be like, damn. But then something would happen, and I'd be just <coughs> sluggering through, you know? Do you get the wind knocked out of you in comedy from time to time? Yeah. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's so much work, you know? Because it's like you you could be doing, you know, doing shows, 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 and then all of a sudden weeks, no shows. Like, what is going on here, you know? As far as road, you know? It's so weird how... Uh He, you know, you, you do comedy 25 years. And yeah. You still get kicked in the fucking stomach. You yeah. Know? I just got turned down by two high-level management teams. Yeah. Was I depressed? I mean, I wasn't happy about having to pay somebody extra money unless they were that good. They were going to bring me that much extra film work or TV work, which right. I really didn't want to do. You know, like I was thinking about it. Yeah. So when they told me no, like the people who called me, like, bro, are you sitting down and this is going to really depression? I'm like, no, I'm not depressed at all. Yeah. That means nobody's going to take my money and I still control the fucking kingdom, you know. I didn't know how they were going to come at me or whatever or what type of... But to be honest with you, at this point of the game, I really don't want that. So I, in a way, I was like kind of happy, like relieved. Like if I go with them, I'm going to have to have do a certain amount of weeks on the road or do this because yeah. that's what all our other clients are doing. And I really don't want to do that, man. Yeah. I think I, I've been tailing off the road a little bit. Like, I've been telling them, no, 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 I don't want to do a lot of shit. I'm pretty much home the whole month of April. Wow. Really? Okay. The That's only gig wild. I'm doing April 20th in Oxnard, 420. Oh, yeah. In fucking Oxnard. Beside that, I'm not really doing much in April. I got theaters in May and Utah or something crazy. And I got, like, Kansas City or something like that in June or July. That's it. I don't have a lot of work. I'm like you guys. I'm in the same boat as you motherfuckers. I want to be a dad. Yeah. I want to be a dad, and I'll do the podcast with my brother here and have a great time and do drugs and run up and down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes no difference to me, but I don't yeah. want to be in fucking D.C. or anywhere else from fucking Wednesday to Sunday night. I don't want to do that, man. Yeah. Not at this point in my life. I get it. I like it how it is. I like it. I don't need to go out there and kill myself. I'm not trying to prove anything. 
I'm not that guy, man. Yeah. I'm very happy with what's going on right now. So it's really weird how you get the wind knocked out of you, but you need that. And at the end, when you think about it, you're like, you know what? Yeah. Did I even really want that? What would I do with that? You know, sometimes yeah. it's better to want than to have, you know, so. Yeah. What's up, dog? You seeing things? Uh, I see you looking around like fucking yeah. Kennedy got shot. What's the matter? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just, yeah, I'm really deep. How deep? It's just really speedy right now. That's speedy. all. Speedy? Well, you want to take a walk around the block? I'm away for you. Go ahead. No, it's okay. You sure? Yeah. I'll be allowed, I'll be like Owen Benjamin. I'll I'll be uh, cross country skiing. I don't know where he, like he's <laughs> like I don't know where he is now. I keep I, I follow him on Instagram. He's country cross country skiing. <laughs> There's snow around him. He moved. He yeah, moved. he moved. He moved to like upstate New York or something, right? Yeah, he went home. Oh, man. good for him. He had a baby, bro. Yeah. And he saw this for what it was, and he goes, "I don't want to stay here." <laughs> If they want to hire me, let them call me. I'll fly and take a plane. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's what it's become. I think he does his podcast up there by himself. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, why I not? can't be mad at him. I can't be mad at him. Not everybody wants to live in Los Angeles. Not everybody wants to raise a child here. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the fence, though. I'm still on the fucking fence. Yeah. The only reason why I wouldn't leave is because I don't want to move. I know how much of a fucking pain the ass of this. Yeah, especially. especially if I got to move across fucking country with cats and wives yeah. and babies and fucking. It's not the same as just moving across the street? Like, no. no. Really? Like, I, I feel like no. if you're already packed up, you just do it. You have no idea when you land at your destination and your furniture is not there for another week. Yeah. And you got to live in a house with no furniture for another week. Then it gets there and they try to ransom your furniture. Yeah. It was an extra $1,000 per mile. So now you owe $9,000. You have three days to come up with it. You can't get You have no fucking idea. What are we going to do with the cats yeah. and the kid? We're going to have to put them all in the same fucking vehicle and stop every hour on the hour so the cats could get air because they're going to be meowing to that <laughs> back there. You want to shoot yourself. It's a 20 hour fucking ride where we got to go with a child. That means you got to stop and sleep and take all those animals out and guard the fucking truck with all the furniture in there. Yeah. You have no idea, my friend. Nah. When you got to get up in the middle of the night or bring a friend with a trailer so he could sleep outside close to your fucking furniture. Yeah. You have no idea, Lisa. I had. Nah. Yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you is fucking correct. Yes. Yes. What shows have you seen lately that have been sensational? That have come to mind the last six months? Shit, man. I know you saw Sabbath. I mean, you go a lot. Yeah, that Temple of the Dog was the one. Oh, it was insane at the... Uh, Forum. At Forum, man. I still can't believe how great that was. Just blows me away, man. It was just to hear those songs... And then they were doing some of the Love Bone songs also. So it was just like, oh, my God. Couldn't believe it. Cornell sounded amazing, you know. Now talk to me about the forum. Yeah. So a New York company bought it. The people who run Madison Square Garden. Garden. Yep. And I heard they went in there and just it looks <sighs> and sounds. It's and insane. What they did was they... they there used to be this amazing video of it too that the uh, LA Times put together what was a speed shot of them working for like a year and a half or whatever but they dug down so the thing kind of goes like this gradually you know so every seat you're not in anybody's sight lines you know just kind of slowly graduates up then they built all they they had some guy come in and shoot lasers or whatever and put the speakers all over in the perfect spots. It's insane, man, in there. Then all the seats it's made only for music now, no sports at all. So it's just an incredible like That's why everybody's going down. Yeah. And it's I mean it's fucking I mean Eric Clapton's gonna be there. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible, dude. How fucking old is Eric Clapton? 70? Yeah, I think he's 70, 72. Look that up, Lee. I think he's 72. He says this is it. 
Yeah. <coughs> God fucking bless him, man. Yeah. 72. Still alive. Music. Looks good. He looks great. Did heroin for all those years. Was a dirty fucking junkie. Shh. It gives me hope. Yeah, man. That guy. He killed. All him. those guys are alive, man. You know, like a... Uh, 45. Oh, no, he... No, yeah, he yeah, yeah, no. yeah. He ain't no fucking 40. No, 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 no. He was born 1945, March 30th. So it's 55 and 17 is what? 72? Yep. 72, 72. Yeah, yeah. 72 years old. Yeah. And, you know, like five years ago, he he's got going it. through changes, Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this 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 is changes. What's what's happening? <laughs> this is changes. To the audience. Uh, uh, it's it's the same stuff. It's just really. You want another edible? No. Oh yeah, yeah. What do we got left? I don't know. Do you have any stars left? Or, no. Yeah, um, I don't think so. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's uh, I'm sweating it out as it I is. I dare you to smoke some more of that weed. No, there's no more left. Oh, there's no? No. And oh. the fucked up thing is I got to go first thing tomorrow. I got to go drop my car off. Oh. Guys, I woke up this morning. <laughs> I had a flat fucking tire. Oh, uh, no. Okay. No big deal, Joey. What the fuck's the big deal? Yeah. Well, it was raining here like a motherfucker this morning. Yeah. Traffic was out the fucking gazoo. I said, fuck it. Let me take it to Just Tires. I take it over to my man over at Just Tires. I go, I'm going to go get some coffee with my wife. Call me. Calls me back, goes, yeah, you need a front tire, two hundred and sixty something dollars. I go, why two hundred and sixty something dollars? He goes, well, I got to replace both front ones. I go, listen, I got to bring back the car in two two months. Yeah. He goes, what about one tire? I go, all right, what's the one tire? One sixty eight. Yeah. I go, I don't want to pay one sixty eight for fucking two months. Yeah. So I call the Subaru guy and he goes, bring the fucking car down. I'll take it back. Yeah. I don't want to bring. I don't, I don't have four hours to deal with that shit this week. I gotta do promo. The fucking CD gets released on Friday for oh, the yeah. special I oh, shot. Yeah. So I gotta do all this fucking promo. I don't have a four-hour window to go down there, pick a car, drive around the corner, do the credit app, do all that shit, sit, get the car explained to you. Yeah. Then I'm starving. I gotta go take the wife to eat somewhere. It's a fucking nightmare. Maybe next week I could do it. So I went to this Armenian dude, and he said, "Come by in the morning. We'll see if we can plug it up." If not, I'll get you a tire from the back and we'll hook it up. So Yeah. I'll know my day tomorrow after I fucking... Do you drive over it or something? What do you think happened? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I was gone all weekend. <sighs> I came home yesterday. I drove. I went to yeah. Perennial. I went to my buddies. I made a stop here. But everything was local. I didn't go nowhere. I yeah. mean, once I got off the fucking plane, I just ran two errands. What did I do? I went to the weed store with this other one. Yeah. So somewhere along that fucking line, I got a nail on my goddamn car. Uh, Which, who gives a fuck? It's got nothing no. to do with the price hikes. We still yeah. got to take forward. And, but that's what you wake up to on a Monday. Yeah. It kind of sucks. And I kept thinking, let me just put the bicycle tire on that motherfucker. I didn't want to get rained on for a bicycle tire. <laughs> so that thing's a nightmare, too. Now I got to change the thing twice. Why waste energy? Let me just bang it out the one time. I keep putting air in there and praying. <laughs> so it's at half mass right now. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the work ethic you have. I could see that your work, and I always go. I always look at I, Lee and I sit here night after night having conversations about different podcasts, what makes different podcasts work, what doesn't make it work. And you're a, a great example of what who is supposed to. You put it up, you tweet it, you tweet it again, you tweet it again, you put a clip up. That's what you need to do in today's fucking economy, man, to make a, a splash. I have big you, guests. You're not annoying about it. You have you had Bill Paxton last week. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck you scored that savage. And that was awesome. As crazy as it might sound, yeah. you have guests that are actually about the topic that you're talking about. It's it's amazing. Yeah. How like especially in these like you, like you like could it be bringing on a lot of comedians who might not have, like if you brought me on the show I'd be a waste on the show. Yeah. Because I don't know anything about music, but you bring people who actually have interesting music things to talk about, and it's it's just great. Man, I had Joe Travers on today, and he's the guy who's in charge of the entire Zappa uh, music collection. It's all on tape. And, you know, the tape can rot away and everything. So he's in charge every day, full-time job, of baking the tapes, keeping them conditioned, bouncing them onto another 
uh, piece of tape. All this, it's like a, a non stop. So he has the he has all the master recordings. Yep, all the masters, and he's constantly working with them because they reissue all all kinds of records and stuff all the time. And uh, he's in charge. He's called the Vault Meister. It's cool. And uh, he said there's over a thousand tapes. So imagine, like that's just a full time job. Isn't that cool? Do you feel like you missed your calling? Who me? Yeah. No. No. No way, man. I don't want to be the vault vault meister. I mean, what an interesting job. Isn't somebody doing something? Aren't they doing something with Prince's music? I, well, I, I heard it's going back on iTunes next week. You know what is his music? It's been off since the since he passed. So all his music was taken off iTunes. It was on for a while, and then he took it off, and 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 then it was on again, and then he passed away, and it was gone again. So I heard it's coming back next week. He was one of the last holdouts, I think. Remember, like the Beatles and him, like five years. No, ago? I think there's a couple people holding up. Yeah, there's a even ACDC for a while was holding. Yeah, up. I yeah. can't find a lot of shit on there. Sometimes I ask my wife. I get back home. She's like, it wasn't on there. Yeah. I looked three times. I went on the other way. And I can't find. I'm like, that's fucking weird. That that whole. Yeah. Speaking of which, the other night I'm driving somewhere with my wife. We got a babysitter. We're gonna go to dinner. I'm fucking driving and I stay where the heaven comes on. You know? Yeah. And guys that are our age know, you know, stay where the heaven came on and all of a sudden somebody from the neighborhood died. And yeah. You put Led Zeppelin 2 in there. I said Led Zeppelin 4 in there. and Something about that song. You know, it's just something about that song that even, like I was, right there is when it came to me. I go, Led Zeppelin was never going to lose that court case. Yeah. It was never going to happen. They took the, the two dudes back to the room and said, listen, this music has become a part of American society. Yeah. Let's pretend they stole the courts, which you did. Okay? Yeah. Which you motherfuckers did, you two nasty motherfuckers and <laughs> shit. <laughs> which you did. <laughs> I can't get mad at them. Did you listen to really? your version? Yeah. It makes you want to shoot yourself. <laughs> it makes you want to shoot yourself. I'm sure <laughs> people say that about my jokes. Maybe yeah. like, hey, man, maybe somebody can do that joke better. But yeah, it's such a part of American society that at this point, it would be so destructive <laughs> to go to for that song to have an asterisk next to it, like to go out like Pete Rose. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Like it, it would just be too much for that song to go out like Pete Rose. Yeah, I, and right there it came. And I go, this song could never, ever yeah. get a song. You know, and I know that there's YouTube videos. Yeah, I mean there's facts. Those songs are facts. But listen to those songs. They weren't going nowhere. Yeah. Three black dudes yelling about something. I don't know what the... There's one <laughs> song that you listen to that yelling about something. Zeppelin <laughs> took it and fucking cleaned it up. I'm sorry, guys. Here's $50. is a bottle of wine. Do what you need to do. All right? It's over. It's ours. Oh, my God. It's crazy what they did with <laughs> Zeppelin. Crazy. But they took everything to a different fucking level, man. Oh, man. And, and you know, and you hate to say all this shit as a comedian and whatever the fuck we do. You know, you don't want somebody pilgriming your jokes or whatever, but this is a different type of pilgrimage. They said, listen, we're going to take this and make this 20 times better than it was. <laughs> and we're not going to give you a dime for it. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to show you what way you fucked up. Uh, you know, stay away to heaven uh, solo till this fucking oh, day. Oh, man, it, it's the top. It's Jimmy Page's soul. Is, it's just some solos that you listen to and you know who's fucking around, who's doing it for the girls. You know what solo has always killed me? Angus on... Touch too much at the end. Oh, and the the one on that the one we talked about, overdose. That's oh, one of yeah. my favorite guitar pieces by him. Oh. Where he just gets down and dirty, oh, and you can feel it. In on there. the end there, he's just going for it. When Bonds just keeps going, I overdose. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and Angus is just killing it. I overdose. How you doing, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making through. We'll see. 
You're as tough as fucking nails, man. Let me give some shout outs here real quick. Andrew Rogers, I love you. Peter Mandeber. Jeffrey Collins always on point. Live like Jay. Bailey Legal. Michael Ziegler. Donovan Sickler. Alexander Gonzalez and my main man. <coughs> the King of Sling and Dick, Kern Michael. You know I love you motherfuckers. Don't forget Valentine's Day. I'm at Flappers. And don't forget the 23rd to the 25th. I'm at the House of Comedy in Minneapolis, motherfuckers. How you like me? No! And shit. I'm going to go up there and freeze my ass off in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. But I don't give a fuck. Who wants to go to these towns in the summer? You want to go in this, this natural fucking habitat. You understand me, Lee? Stop breathing heavy. I'm going to send you home to put your pajamas on. Okay. I have pajamas on. And wings. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't like pajamas? For the Super Bowl. You probably have slippers <laughs> on. Oh. I don't like slippers. So you just sat there with those two hoops, just hanging out there. Marinating. I those, love that. Those yeah. Marinating, yeah. those Jew hoops. You can't, you can't get too he's hot. Got, bro, he's got an Auschwitz toe. <laughs> it's a toe that's as hard as fucking stone. He ever tops you with it, you're going down. It's like a steel boot. <laughs> Still, he kicked me one time in jujitsu. My leg was swollen for three weeks. Oh my god! Uh, a little Auschwitz toe. It got burnt. Oh, <laughs> it's nice and fucking hard and shit. Lee's riding that acid. Yep. He's going deep into the murky. Yeah. Waters. How's it treating you, Lee? I'm okay. I'm. Uh, I feel like this isn't another down period. You hungry? No. Okay, no. That's how you know. Oh, what? It plays with you, Lee. This ass is going to play with you all night. You, you see that canister of weed over there? Yeah. <laughs> when I leave, I'm going to put that in the middle of the table. When I come back tomorrow, I'm going to be empty because that's going to be your answer right there. That's how. If you smoke that with the savage tonight, your business ideas are going to come to you. Dad. Your life's ideas are going to come to you. You know, every, all the answers to your questions. I'm going to leave you an album in there. I'll leave you a nice album to meditate. To. What do you think we should leave? Like Johnny Cash or something? The essential Johnny sure. Cash. <laughs> and you're straight. <laughs> Lee just said, sure. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> How many times did you trip growing up, brother? Well, you know, I liked mushrooms way better. I was the opposite. I took acid like four times. Once was at a concert, and that was like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, way too strong. I remember it felt like the uh, stadium was breathing. Like this. And I was just like, oh, I better go ride this out. It was like Motley Crue White Snake. Yeah. <coughs> it was like, it's funny when you connect the breathing with the wall. You know, that's happened to me with anything. With the TV, with a, a picture, a mirror. Oh, my God. Yeah, my computer screen's freaking me out right now. Oh, my God. If you trip in front of a mirror, that's like torture. Yeah, Especially right. when you catch yourself tripping. Yeah. And you see yourself in the mirror tripping like the devil's advocate. Yeah. Lee, stop rubbing your head. Stop looking in the mirror. Shut the computer down. I'm, I'm not looking in the mirror. I'm just I'm just, I'm just sweating. This one refuses Lee. Look at you, Lee. <laughs> that, this that, shit hasn't even hit me. That's how, hey, that's how I felt an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> on that weed. Oh, my God. He's on the weed. And, and you know it. what? I put two drops in this on each of it. Oh, mm -hmm. you motherfucker. Yeah, because I, I put one at the house. I knew this wasn't settled. just one thing. Uh. I put another one when we got here. You know me, dog. We go deep from all angles. I got time to fuck around with these Joey people. went two times on him. <laughs> Joey two times. Yep, yep. Joey, two drops. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm bringing my own sugar cubes next time. You know what? <laughs> He's bringing his own sugar I got a cubes. box of those things, Lee. Oh. I have a box of sugar cubes. My <laughs> wife found them the other day. She's like, what the fuck are these? Yeah. Then I show her the sit of death. Yeah, the sit of death. Fuck, what is wrong with you? Uh -oh. <laughs> she just walked out of the room. She said that. That's hilarious. It didn't hit you, huh? I feel something, but not... I feel the edibles, I think. Right. I feel something. I'm immune to this shit. Oh, my God. I'm immune to this shit. It's yeah. It's been... It's sad. Yeah. It's very sad. It's very sad to know that I'm kind of immune to this shit. That's crazy, like right? I have, like, <laughs> it, it's not that it doesn't affect me. It's I won't even let it affect me. Oh, yeah. Like, I've done it so much now, I can control the whole thing through breathing. It is crazy. It'd be nice if you taught me any of these breathing techniques or <laughs> any of these tips. That's hilarious. Number one, you got to clear your mind. 
every time, listen, man, I think about this shit all the time. I write about it, you know, because I'm interested in human behavior. My biggest acid years and mescaline years and all those giggly years yeah. was from 80 to about 83 where I giggled every week and I had to, oh, I would die. Indeed. Yeah. You know, and the last hour of the trip was me alone coming down, thinking about what was going on in my life, breaking it down, you know, trying to put everything in place. But those six or seven, you know, tell it, Lee. Yeah. Lee, you met with your friends at six. Oh, yeah. You ate them at 6.15 with beer. Yeah. By 8.30, you're on fire. Oh, absolutely. And you're bumping into people, Lee. Like, Lee, this is a different experience. I would head straight to the woods. So what time is it now in in, our, in, the, in that timeline? Uh, we took it at 7.30, right? Right, Se- We sure. took it at 7 o'clock, right? Oh, fuck. At 10 o'clock, you'll be on fire if everything goes well. What time is it now? An hour. You got an hour to get to the oh, hospital. Oh, I can't see that at all. Fuck. Go to the hospital and tell them I did acid two <laughs> hours ago. Give me the fucking detonator. What's the stuff they give you? Yeah. Like when you get stuck by a snake, what do they give you? The, uh, the uh, anti-venom. <laughs> anti-venom. Yeah, yeah, tell them to give you the anti-venom. Yeah. I don't need to go to the hospital, do I? No. No. no okay. We're just teasing you. Okay. If you want to, you got an hour to go over there and tell them to give you some charcoal. I don't want to go to the hospital. And they'll take your name and number. They'll give you a picture of the FBI. Uh, <laughs> they'll stick a telescope up your ass and see what else you got up there. Tell that's, well, that's already there now with okay. all this happening. So I just want you to know before you go to the hospital. Okay. Oh, they'll look for warrants. They'll see if you're a child molester. I'm not. You go in there with that green T-shirt on. You never know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, me. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I shouldn't have gotten Dean high tonight. That was a mistake. I didn't know. It was no, gonna, it's fun. It's good. No, I didn't know it was going to flatten Dean. I really didn't. Oh. I thought your tolerance was a little high. Oh, no. I could see you wanted to play with fire when you walked in here. You were snooping around, looking yeah. at the containers and shit. Yeah, yeah. Looking at pipes, I knew you had something in your mind. I, I didn't even offer it to you. I'm yeah. Like, if you don't get high, you don't get high. What do I give a fuck? People think like if it you was don't great. Get high, I don't like you. No, listen, man. The best part about people who don't get high is when they do take a hit. Yeah. They go deep and it's enjoyable for them. Totally. They go eat after this. Like you're gonna leave here. Yep. And you're stopping somewhere. Will yeah. you eat sugar tonight? No. No, no. Still, you're off it. Oh yeah, man. How long? Nine now? months now. How many pounds? 36. No sugar. Yeah, none. What's for breakfast again? I Well, I wake up, I have either uh, steel-cut oatmeal or I do a protein shake and uh, a piece of toast with uh, uh, almond butter and some fruit. Lee would die if he had to eat almond butter. Oh, yeah, that did not sound like a piece of toast and fruit. Oh, I was trying uh, to figure out what Lee kind of fruit die. to eat. Strawberries and um, and uh, blueberries. That sounds nice. No meat at all. Oh well, the, I have meat at lunch. What do you have for lunch? Then lunch, I'll usually do like uh, you know, uh, like let's say either eggs, you know, like for lunch, like an omelet. Or uh, some quinoa and uh, shit like that. Black beans, we chicken. Go to original Joe's don't want the quinoa, right? No, nah, not not yeah. not there. When I'm there, no, no. I was just there with Russell Peters. And what did you eat that day? I ate the. Um, I got green beans and the hamburger steak. The hamburger yeah. steak is delicious. Oh man, man I love. You don't it. eat bread. No bread. Ezekiel bread. Remember, I can eat that. Ezekiel bread. Lee, you're taking notes. I want you on the Ezekiel diet. Yeah, Lee. In two weeks, you'll fucking be ripped to shreds, Lee. If I came in here with Ezekiel bread, you'd throw me and the Ezekiel bread off the Let me ask you something. Can he eat chicken wings on on this diet? He can, but not the breaded ones. What about the ones with Frank's hot sauce? Yeah. You can eat those? Yep. They don't have no sugar in that Frank's hot sauce? It's a little bit. It's not like ketchup or something, you know? So you don't eat ketchup? I don't. I go mustard. Mustard has no sugar. No, I love mustard. I too. love mustard. I love it. That nice yellow. I like the yellow. Yellow the mustard Frenchies. on a hamburger. Oh, good googly moogly, dude. Shit. Dude, fuck I wish I had it now. With no bun. No bun. Little ham, a little mustard on it. You yeah. fucking put it in. A lot of people use mustard in sauces. Yeah. 
Like the base, it would be a mustard, sure. whatever, and it's fucking delicious. I love I it. I didn't know it was. I don't know nothing about being a chef. I'm just a fat fuck. I love it. You know, a lot of people ask me if I'm not a guy. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I want to know nothing. Yeah. If I got a pound chicken, I'd rather get raped. <laughs> if I got a pound like a chicken cutlet and see what a chicken really looks like, yeah. the paws and shit, I'd rather get raped. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see nothing, all right? I don't want to see no fucking animals in this primitive form. I want to see it in the last condition. That's I don't want to see the head. I don't want to see the eyes. <laughs> I don't want to see what it looks like raw. I don't know. Do I want to fucking see it? Nothing. Yeah. Give it to me well done or medium rare butterfly that motherfucker <laughs> and put some sour cream mashed potatoes and let me go to work here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. A chopped salad. Yeah. Look at Lee. He's floating now. It's all over. Lee, you need one more drop. No, thank you. You want to smoke a bowl? Sure. Because yes. I'll put a drop in the bowl no, to God really send this. Oh, shit. Last week, tell them what we smoked. We smoked a mushroom last week in the bun. Oh, sure. you smoked a mushroom? Fuck yeah. Oh, you well, grind it up it? like oh, tremendous. Yeah. He saw the devil. Yeah. Look at him. He's freaking out. How he is that, Lee? Look at him. He's sweating from his stomach. <laughs> I'm just sweating a lot. I, Why are you was... sweating, Lee? You're, you're working yourself up into nothing. I'm not working myself up. It's, yes, just, I'm, it's just sweat, dude, coming out of me. No, no, but I see you're working yourself up. Stop <laughs> working yourself up, all right? Nothing's going to happen. I'm not your family. Myself. I you're feel panicking, fine. you're making noises, you're thinking about what's Paula going to say. You're 28 years old. No, you're the I'm Captain not. Kirk of the I'm Enterprise. Old. You understand me? You don't have to go see dog movies. All right. Dog movies. That's hilarious. I like that dog movie. So. That's when I was really tripping when he was talking about that. And uh -huh. he said, what the fuck? And I couldn't even comment. <laughs> yeah. I used to go to, I think I've been to Barney's Beanery twice and both times I got sick. Yeah. Yeah, you go there? I used to go to that Hollywood one right there. You know, it's a drinking spot. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a rocker. That's why I went. Yeah, they got pool tables. It's yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't really. <coughs> well, I, didn't, you eat there? I didn't really eat there. You know. I, I mean, I forget what I went there for a managers meeting once or something. Yeah, like a bunch of people met, and then I went in there to meet people after like a comedy store spot for a football game. I went in there, and there were some crazy people. Yeah. And that was it, really. I've never really been a big... And then I went to this one to watch a UFC fight. Oh, yeah. I went up the block from Flappers. I went in there with my fam, my wife. Yeah, that's where oh, we went. Yeah. Excuse me? That's the one I went to. Yeah, I went over there. But Mr. Turkey Club over here. Man. Unbelievable. Man. Turkey Club. Turkey Club. How's that fucking club? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Turkey Club. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I don't want a burger. <clears throat> no, I want to go with either these, one of these next shows. I got to get out of the house at night. I got to make a change. Yeah, let's do it. You know, Paul Mooney always said, if you want to write good material, you got to be entertained. To really write, you got to be always entertained, you know, and it makes sense. I try to entertain myself with various different fucking ways and torturing people, but uh, it's not enough entertainment. This isn't enough anymore? Huh? This isn't enough anymore? Oh, yeah. This isn't entertainment for me. Well, Lee. You would have lived your whole life without eating an edible. You would have never thought of eating an edible. Probably, yeah. You would have never thought of smoking. You would have smoked twice more in your life. You would have been staying at home every night in Boston at the movie theater. You would have probably had a different job by now. You would have gone to visit mom three nights a week and get a free meal. I know you. <laughs> you would have drove the hour. Think of how your horizons have changed. It's crazy. It's amazing. You got a girlfriend. You do some acid. We do some mushrooms. Everything's in moderation. It's not like we're out Friday and Saturday night drinking and doing that's fucking what, but drugs. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's like, we're this human experiments enough? here. Oh, oh this God. is perfect. <laughs> Wednesday, we'll go four drops. I forgot no, we put two. We'll do four drops on Wednesday to really get the party started. Four drops. That's when you wake up and you hear ambulances. What happened? I don't know. Wow. Yeah, Some right. guy just jumped off the fucking building over here. Four what? drops, man. Wow. Jimmy, for Joey, four drops. Lee, four drops. <laughs> hey, because I did a drop at the house. I let it melt. And then I put another piece in. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my look god. Look at him, look at him, look at him. He's squeezing his teddies. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's, I'm fucked up, bro. Stop breathing. St breathe out your nose. Come on. That's so funny. Stop thinking about. I'm not thinking about anything. Yes, like, you are. No, that's, I'm, 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 I'm sitting here having a conversation with my man, Dindo Rizzi. <laughs> and I'm. See? They're coming for you. They're not coming for me. They're coming for you. No, they're not. I can yes, hold them together. 
And look at the ass. It's in your pocket. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, oh shit. I put it in your jacket pocket over there. Just I don't have a jacket. Yes, you do. I would never do that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Think of how much fun you've had. We've had fun. Yeah, fuck yeah, it's fun. You didn't die. You didn't get sick. Oh. It's not like we're shooting heroin. It's not like you're drinking 52 shots yeah. for no reason. We just This was all a light dose. Two hits is a light dose, Lee. I don't know what you're talking about, but this yeah. is a big dose. For me. No, tomorrow we'll do four. And then next week we'll take it to eight, six, boom, until we finish it. This is the, the te- this is it's Black History Month. <sighs> We're celebrating Black History Month out of respect for Frederick Douglass. People have been bad mouthing him lately, and we're gonna do acid fucking every other p- podcast this month. Sure. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Poor Lisa, yeah. He's thinking about moving home. <laughs> Look at him. He goes through. Can't do it every other podcast. That's twice. That's once a week. <laughs> that's <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do the whole f- month of February on the Hit of Sid. How's that? What do you think? <laughs> For Black History Month. Hit of Sid Month. Oh, the fuck is it? I hit it. Now I hit it from myself. Thank God. I always do this. I hide the Sid from myself. Oh, ass. What's the next band you were going to plan to go see? Man, I'm hoping to see Metallica this Sunday at uh, Palladium. Is it sold out? Well... I don't know what's going on. It's like they're playing the Grammys, and then that night they're going to do a show at the Palladium, and uh, it's like Citibank putting it on or something, but I'm trying to get into that. Oh, okay. So Citibank, it's for Citibank cardholders. It might be, yeah, or it could be also fan club. I don't know, but I'm going to get in somehow. Now they have a new album. That's oh, incredible. Come on. Yeah, I can't believe it. Come on. I swear I can't believe it's it. It's out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was number one for a couple weeks. What the fuck do I live? Yeah. This is what I'm saying. I got to get my life together. <laughs> oh. I understood the album was coming out. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, it was number one already for two weeks? Oh, yeah. Let me get you a song off this. So, Lee, look this one up. Okay. Uh, Dude, this thing is. I didn't fucking know this. Nobody tells me Dick Lee. You, you're in charge of music. <laughs> if I'm in charge of music, we're going to be stuck pretty c- small. It's time we both got our act together, Lee. We got to get on top of this shit. Maybe we'll hire Rain and Bazio. Sure. Okay, Lee. Yes, sir. Put on this song right here. Okay, I can't read right now, so you're going to have to just tell me what the Okay, thing. Spit Out the Bone, Metallica. You got to hear this. Spit song. Out the Fucking Bone. Yeah, wait to hear this, Joey. How long have they been around for? 20 years? 32. Yeah. 33 this year, yeah. Here you go. Listen to this. <laughs> oh my god no, that, that, that was bad. great when it came on he just went no <laughs> uh, oh my god that's scary okay <laughs> that's hilarious i always thought that people just retired one day so they, in all these years they only had one person they'll change the bass player that left that time uh two different bass players one died then they got a replacement, Jason, and then he quit, and now they have the third bass player. No, Jason has his own band now. No, he he did. He did. Yeah, and then I don't know what happened. He put out a thing called Newstead like two years ago. It was smoking, and then it just stopped. It was awesome, man. So the new guy, the Trejo? 
Yep. What's he, his name? Uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, I'm telling you, this shit makes you forget. There's years we're getting. Yeah, away. right. Uh, Trahelio. Trahelio. Yep. He's good. He's good. Like yeah. Him. He's all yeah. in. He's all in. Oh yeah. He's. I mean, he's great. It's like. Where, what band did he come from? Uh, he was in uh, Suicidal Tendencies. Pretty sure that's the band. Look that up, Lee. It's uh, Suicidal Tendencies. I'm pretty sure. Trahelio. How do you spell his name? Trujillo? Yeah. T-R-U-J-I-L-L-O. Trujillo. Fucking Trujillo. Like he I don't know. Fucking Trump's nephews over here. Yeah. At this point, I'm supposed to be able to okay. yeah, there you have a Spanish accent. I'm sorry. Look up his groups. It's right there. Or his groups? Yeah. Bands or... Discography? Yeah. I'm just saying. He has a lot of them. He has Jerry Cantrell, Black Label Society, Infectious Groove, Suicidal Tendencies. Suicidal Tendencies. Glenn Tipton, nice. Mass Mental, Ozzy Osbourne. Glenn Tipton? Yeah. Make Jesus, Metallica. this guy's fucking experienced. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, <coughs> yeah he's been through the fucking... Yeah, he replaced Rudy Sarzo. Yeah, like he exactly. Was like the, he yeah. was like the Rudy yeah, Sarzo yeah. of when yeah. up. Yep, he was an Ozzy, you know. He was an Ozzy also. Yeah. He played an Ozzy. So these guys get stronger and they just move into stronger bands, it seems like. Yeah. I Why mean, is there so many personal changes in heavy metal now? I think it still comes down to money, you know? Like the lead guy this long. Is, what's Ozzy take home? Oh, what's, shit. What's he pay his band? Give me an example of what is going on in the music industry. Like I don't know what those guys are making now, but let's say a big guy... Uh, back then was probably making like you know five grand a week plus per diem you know maybe more i don't know all right when the eagles incorporated yeah it was glenn fry the drummer yeah don henley and they put the other guy in joe walsh but the guitar player and the other guy at work were fucking employees yeah yeah. Nice money. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was oh yeah, good money, but they were employees. They got nothing from the recording. Nothing, right? Yeah, I think so. They, I think they were just like hired on. At what uh, point did they get brought on? Did they? Well, when they did that reunion tour, they went out with all the guys, right? You know. But I, it, what happens is there's dudes that quit, and then the other dudes keep it going. And then the guys that quit go, hey, I want to come back. And they're like, well, you quit for years. We kept this going. So you can't just step right into the same partnership. You know what I mean? And what is the usual partnership? Like if I, let's say tomorrow, fucking Soundgarden fired Kim, whatever, the guitar yeah, player. Yeah. And I became the new guitar player. You would I just would, be a hired gun. That's it. Yeah, forever. Yeah. Because once... The other three see the more money the pie share go. They're, they're not going to ever. They're like, we'll just hire a guy. You know what I mean? Why chisel? Now, is that guy going to be in on recording sessions? Doesn't he get a cut of the recording sessions? Yeah, they'll take care of him for that. Yeah, yeah. He'll but not like what everybody else is getting. If he comes up with something, then he could get like songwriting credit while they're you know working on music. But some bands, uh, you know, I think look at it as like, well. You know, you're you're an employee. So you work for us, so you record, you tour, you whatever, you know? I mean, look at you right now. Right now, you're an independent contractor. You don't have an agent. You got a guy that's helping you as your manager. He helps you book some stuff. But pretty much, you do all the bookings. I don't have any manager. Oh, he's not managing you? No. I don't have any manager or agent. You're out there, a lone wolf of society. Yeah. Okay. So now you're a lone wolf aside. You're going to bang it out for two more years. And finally, this young kid that grew up with a dad who's a rocker is an assistant somewhere. Yeah. And he's going to come up to you and go, hey, man, I really dig you. I've been trying to talk this guy, my idiot boss, into fucking uh, booking you, but he, he says you need to be a little bigger. I believe in you. How about I put you like six, seven weeks, you know, and... 
you and him put six or seven weeks together, you make a little bit of money. A year later, this guy gets promoted. He's a junior agent at fucking Gersh. Yeah. And you're his first client, you know. So now he can spread his wings a little more. Now you got a raise. You're selling tickets. Boom, boom. Then you get another raise with this guy. So now you've probably got like three raises. You've been with him for like five or six years. Now you have to get a manager. You're not making top, top Kevin Hart money, so you don't really have to worry. But you're making money at an age where every dollar counts. Yeah. You're not 22 no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. At some point, you want to skip away from this game, buy a ranch somewhere, and that's it. Play the guitar and watch your toenails grow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the truth. I don't care. Whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, you'll still make some money, and you'll still do this, and you'll still do that. But for the most part. Yeah. Do you feel it's fair that this manager who comes on, you have to give him everything you're making when you and this other guy, he's been booking you for five or six years. He's gotten you the pretty good fucking money. I come in here and I'm like, I'm going to be your manager, Dean that right. You have to give me 10% of your road money. The same road money that you and I, that you and this agent have been working for. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Man. Do you kind of deal with them? Do you say, listen, I can't give you as much as him because he's been here from day one? Well, yeah, I think people will take a cut because they're like, at least they're getting something, you know, part of the money, you know? I What I always would do is like, if somebody wanted to manage me, I would say, okay, anything that you get and bring to me will split, but everything I get is just on my own. Well, no, that's, me. that's yeah. my philosophy Totally. All the way through. Yeah. If you got your name on my IMDB and you got your name on my other thing that you were supposed to submit to, and some motherfucker calls me at the house, guess what? I'm cutting you the fuck out. <laughs> Obviously, that shit didn't stick out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you better change the name of the company to a letter A so they can see it first. Because really, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. For years, I got that. Yeah. They call you so they don't have to pay the VIG. Yep. They know that if they don't call the agent, they save 300 a little better hotel room. A little bigger trailer. You know, with a good yeah. agent, you get all these little things. I got your gallon of water. Yeah. I yeah. got your mustache. I got you this. Without that agent, you won't get those little things. That's what I did for years. Yeah. And you see the difference. For being a fucking greedy fuck for a $10 difference. Yeah. One day, I just said, no, you got to call my agent. And once I started telling people to call my agent, guess what happened? Yeah. I got no work. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're oh. looking for people with no fucking agents. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so creepy. They're looking for people with no agents. Yeah. So they could go, all right, this job pay scale, plus you get a whole tower room. Okay? Totally. Then two years later, you find out that the guy, that a uh, comic that couldn't shine your shoes, he was at three yards. Guess what they were paying him? They were paying him 2500 an episode. Yeah. A whole tower room, a plane ticket. And meanwhile, you're like, what the fuck did I do? Yeah. If I would have got an agent that had half a heartbeat, he would have got me some fucking dough, you know? Yeah. I got a guy I left that I feel bad about. Not the sharpest guy in the shed. But I love him because he'll do exactly what you tell him to do. Yeah. And that takes balls. Yeah. He'll, if you tell him, listen, tell him 50000 for the role. They ain't going to give you 50000 for the role. But you can just have a good time and send this guy in there for 50000 He'll yeah. call you back stuttering like, Lee, listen, 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 listen. They almost hung up on me. But listen, it's a good thing. They really want you. <laughs> <laughs> they really want you. They really want you. So they're not going to give you 50000 Yeah, That's off the table. It's a $100 day movie, Joey. That's why I told you 50000 because I don't want the role. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want them to hang up on you. Yeah. I had this one role. These people would not leave me the fuck alone. An MC with one arm. <laughs> They wanted me to put a tuxedo on and tuck my arm away behind my back. Yeah. And I had one arm on stage. They couldn't figure out I was going to do it. They went from $100 to 2000 a day. Wow. That's how much this agent beat him up. I kept saying, get him for 1500 Then he would call me back. Are you going to confirm on that? And I go, get him for 1750 Wow. I had this guy going in and out of there <laughs> for about 10 days like an animal that he is. And this guy thought he had a deal the entire time? This oh is a hundred dollar low budget film. Yeah, I said to them before I go in there, let, send me the fucking cast list. I want to see who was in this movie. There's nobody. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, wait a second, I'm not doing this for a hundred dollars a day. So I yeah. send fucking Godzilla in there. Yeah, like I said, Godzilla's not the smartest guy, but he'll go in there like a fucking <laughs> like on. nothing, dog. Yeah, yeah. 
I can call him back. Get me two fifty. Yeah, hey. I'll do it for two fifty. <laughs> <coughs> do you want to commit? Let me check my dates. I'll call you in the morning. And then I'll call him in the morning. Oh, those dates aren't any good. Get him for five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would get me the fucking date for a nickel. We, I fuck with him for five or six days. Unbelievable. <laughs> I did this for a while with this dude. That is so. And funny. they finally said, "Fuck it, two thousand flat a day, three days." Oh my god! It was a score. Yeah, I just did from a hundred. Yeah. yeah, we worked them from a yardstick. Yeah, fuck you and your hundred dollar day movie. I didn't move to California to do hundred dollar fucking day movies. Oh, yeah, that's hilarious. And I hate talking about money on the podcast, but I want you guys that listen to this know that they'll come to you and go, "All we can give you is hundred dollars a day." But meanwhile, they could give you ten thousand dollars a fucking day. Yeah. They just don't want to do it. And they are giving ten thousand a day. And they are giving ten thousand to people who have like a good agent. Totally. Or somebody who asked for it. I finally real listen, if you don't ask for it, you're not gonna get it. Dude. Yeah. The worst thing they can say is I can't do that, but they're not not gonna give you the job. So ask for it. Yep. If I don't wanna do the fucking job, I'm gonna hit them with a number that's gonna rock their fucking world. Yeah. I want them to hang up the phone. And that's okay. I didn't want to do the job. Yeah. You know, I don't wanna be in that movie. I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do So yeah, you have to ask for your value sometimes, what you see. Yeah. You know, the problem with comedy is that when we get here we judge our value on how funny we are. Fucking this guy's got a TV show. I'm way funny than him. The other night I killed behind him at the store. I'm telling you. He can't follow me. He got to follow me at the Cafe Salerk. He couldn't follow. You know, all that shit just goes in your mind. And then one day you realize the business aspect of it. Yeah. It's like even with that Twisted Sister documentary we spoke about. They were the bank account, and nobody wanted to sign them. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. You know how frustrating that feeling is? That's got to be crazy, right? Yeah, Anytime. That catalog was in a vault? Is that what you said? No? The catalog was in the vault. <laughs> catalog was in the vault. I thought you said the catalog was, there, like their catalog was in a uh, vault or something. Whose catalog? Oh, no, that was the podcast that I was talking about. A few hours ago. No, just right, right now. Never mind. Okay. Oh, this is no. We're talking about the Twisted Sister documentary. Right. You know, how many times they failed, and even this was a guy. This was a band who had an audience. That all you had to do was sign them, and you were going to start making money right away. Totally. This isn't like I got to sign Lee and start from scratch and put him in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. And then build them up. To this is at the Birmingham. top. The money this machine. The this is the money machine, dog. So it's pretty interesting that. No matter what level, you always get fucking humps and bumps. I'm sure Eddie Murphy wants movies that he don't get. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm sure or even stars like that. Like, I want. I read that script. I'd be perfect for it. And they're like, fuck you. Yeah. You're 20 years too fucking old, stupid. <laughs> I'm going to change the whole direction of the movie because you want to try to make a comeback. Suck my dick. Because, yeah, they're hustling scripts, too. Totally. You know, when you're not working, you're hustling scripts. If you are not well off, not... Even if you're well, who, who wants to sail away into the night in this fucking society? Yeah. Without fucking working, you know? I don't have, like I said, I don't have the patience to look at scripts no more. Yeah. I want to do stand up. I want to do the podcast. If the Animal Planet thing works, so be it. I'm ready to work with cats. If it doesn't, I'll move the fucking on or yeah. we'll pitch a different idea, you know? But something that's got to be in a micro setting. I'm not, I, I'm not ready for all that big shit anymore. That's yeah. it. I'm through. Yeah, that. yeah. I'm through with that shit. I just want to do me, Lee, a boom, and let's go. Let's shoot this shit. You got it? Yeah, move on. I got to sit here for two hours. You didn't turn the mic on. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. That's the quickest way to fucking get me unenchanted. How about an enchanted fucking evening? Any more waters? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's fucking thirsty. Lee, you want another water? You drinking any water? You got to dehydrate yourself. Should I drink water? That acid's burning a hole in your stomach. You understand me? Oh, uh, yeah. What I'll do is give you a fucking water with a little acid in it, a slow dilute. It's like a mild coffee, you know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck. <laughs> slow dilute. Every time you drink water, you get a flashback. That ever happened to you? You ever get fucked up on vodka and, oh, vodka yeah, and iced tea? Jack Daniels, that did it. Ooh. Yeah, Every no, time I'm, I smelled it, just vomit. You ever get like, you ever drink like vodka and iced tea? Yeah, that was And you go vodka. home, and then you wake up in the middle of the night to get something to drink, and there's iced tea. Oh. And it tastes like ass, because you can Ooh. still taste the vodka in it. That's yeah. what I'll give you. I'll give you a dilate. Let me give you a water. Let me give you a, <coughs> let me give you a splash I'm not taking nothing that you're giving me. Huh? Come on, though. You're nah. treating like a Cosby all of a sudden. I've been <laughs> your uncle for five fucking years. You don't trust me now. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. That's hilarious. Mm. 
So you're doing a theater in Denver when? February 18th. On a Saturday night. Before. Saturday night doing the Sioux Teatro Theater. And if you punch in the pre-code of candles lit, you'll get a discount. But yeah, that's going to be interesting. I love Denver, man. Doing comedy there. One of my top. He contacted you out of the blue? Yeah, he... Uh, he listens to the podcast, and I think he saw me the last time I was headlining out there. He said, hey, you want to do it? And I said, Let, let's do it. He, he's done it right, man. He made an ad. He's got radio ad and like a kind of a little cheap TV spot. Yeah, he's going for it. So he's going for it. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Man. Nope. Love it. Love it, man. While you're there, you'll see a show or two. You fly in on the 17th early. You could fly Burbank Southwest. That's the best. Like a doctor, right into Denver, two hours. You ask don't oh, hurt. Oh, I take the early one too, the first non-stopper. Oh, right it's there. great. You do Burbank, you go to where Burbank there. only. God. Back Sunday on the Lord's Day, no problem. No Nobody problem. gets their feelings hurt. Awesome, right? It's a beautiful fucking thing. You know, it's funny how I get kind of fucked up with stand up, but once you're up there, even like in Nashville, like I said, Friday and. Thursday night I had rough fucking sets the early shows but once I get into the flow that's yeah. it I'll murder you you know what I'm saying the only problem is that the new material I got wasn't doing anything right I fractured on it by Friday I just got rid of it I'm like this shit ain't working though. oh man this shit ain't working I'm not trying this shit no more I went back and put an extra material in the notebook with the date on it I'm done <laughs> yeah oh that's the worst this was a lot funnier on paper than what it was on stage. You know what I'm oh, saying? Man. This was a lot funnier in my head than what it really was on fucking stage. Wow. So. How long were you in on it? 20 minutes. I thought I had 20 minutes. My first 20 minutes, I was excited and shit. It was like doom getting kicked on me. I tried it the other night, too, and it didn't work. Who am I kidding? I was just forcing it, and I'm like, this ain't working. <laughs> then I watched Bill Burr's special the other day, and it makes you feel bad as a comic, but then it shouldn't. Because all that is is a result of hard work. Yeah, totally. He writes every day. Yep. You know, either the fucking comic strip TV show or his stand-up. He dedicates real, real time to it. And I got to take my hat off to him, man. You know, uh, he's about to go into a different realm, fatherhood. Yep. It's a different set of fucking materials and jokes, you know, which I've opened up about a little bit. But yeah. not really. It's like you got to keep something close to your heart at right, times, you know. Right. So I still don't know how to uh, act towards it. Like, it's not like my whole fucking act. Because let's face it, I got other fucking disgusting thoughts going through my mind and shit at different <laughs> times of the day. Yeah. I can't just say I'm a full time fucking dad and I feel this way and I'm giddy and I fly around with butterflies and shit. Because <laughs> I really don't. You still got to figure out how to keep the lights on and uh, totally. how to fucking. Uh, you know, keep doing what you do and get your rest and be healthy, you know. It's so weird how we both turned to the health thing the last couple of years. Yeah. Once you, this is the shit we could, and I tell Lee all the time, you know, this is the shit that we didn't take care of when we were 30 and 32. That comes back to bite you in the ass. It does, man. And then later on, you got to go back to these drastic measures anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If I could have done it all over again, I would have got rid of soda when I was like 25. I would have got rid of juices. Yeah. You know? Totally. Uh, I would have continued my exercise routine, even if it was something at home. If I couldn't make a move to the gym, I'd still do 50 squats, 50 push ups, 50 burpees, you know? Yeah. I'd still try to do all those things, you know? Uh, sleep. Sleep. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the one I don't do at all. That's number one. I casted sleep off for that's 10 number years. One. Yeah. yeah, that's number You're one. Like, that's sleep. the one that ages you. Yeah. That's the one that fucks up your biological clock. That's the one that fucks up your central nervous system. You know, when you're doing bumps of coke at four in the morning, yeah, and you haven't slept for twenty hours, it does something to your, oh, you God, know, when you're doing yeah. meth or whatever the fuck you're doing, it yeah. shocks the central. You know, that's why the first year acupuncture. She said to me, she goes, I'm just ri getting rid of trauma every week. Yeah. All the trauma your body went through, I got to get rid of it one step at a time, little by little, you know. And then after that, then I got to heal it. Then I got to build your chi up. But for starters, 
I got all that shit traumatizes your body. Sleeping yeah. in a van. Yeah. You know, bombing, drinking whiskey, eating bad pussy. Yeah. You yeah. lose fucking marks at every level, you yeah. know. Dirty food. Oh my god, the diet I was on oh, from two thousand I to remember two thousand eight yeah. was just I went on this fucking sabbatical at that oh. starting like in ninety nine, you know. Yeah. My, my my metabolism shut completely down. I wasn't living in Boulder anymore. I wasn't living with the high altitude, which burns calories naturally. I wasn't walking anywhere no more. I'd become a road comic. Yeah. And instead of taking advantage of the gyms at the hotels and shit, I wasn't doing that either. I no was just way. eating and eating that, you know, like onion rings. I was never really, listen, I controlled myself yeah. after I moved to New York City. The fried stuff. Oh yeah, the mozzarella sticks. But I would. You don't like that stuff at all. I love it, but it's like like that shit's death. I come from North Bergen, New Jersey, where Italians were fucking groomed. (laughs) I think I've eaten three mozzarella sticks in my life, and that's it. I love. I don't even know what a mozzarella stick. Till I came out here, I didn't know what a mozzarella. Oh man! I never saw one of those things in the fucking East Coast. Fucking love those things. I like wet mutts. We yeah. sliced in on a fucking prosciutto sandwich with some roasted peppers and shit yeah. and some vinegar and oil. I'm all in, motherfucker. Uh-huh. But that other shit, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I really Man. don't. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You're going to give me the paperwork, Lisa? I have? Or you're just going to stare into fucking space and look around <laughs> and dream of having pajamas on and shit. See, it ain't that bad, Lee. I'm, I'm fine. I'm just... It, it circles around. Yeah, it just does circle around. <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. Want to do another drop? Not really. We'll dilute it with a little water. It's been diluted. I no, 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 no. <laughs> We'll dilute it with a little water. Let me something. see. Give me water. No, no, no. Give me half. Drink it down to under the blue. I'll, fill, I'll do one too. I want another drop. Bro, bro it's going to calm you down a little bit. I can see it already. It's going to calm forehead. you down. <laughs> I can see it in your forehead. You're losing energy and shit. This is like a Red Bull ah. thing. Trust me. I've been doing this for 30 years. Would I lie to you? Yes. I'm like the Eurythmics. Would I lie to you, though? <laughs> when I lie to you. <laughs> and I wouldn't fucking lie to my... You're the number one fucking producer in the game. How am I going to lie to you, though? <laughs> you made fucking minced meat out of nothing. Look at you. Over there rubbing your little chubby, good Jewish head and shit. Thinking about the numbers. What are you going to tell Paula? Paula's going to find out. No, I don't care about that. She, she's sleeping. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't care. She doesn't care at all. You got a cool one, huh? Yeah, she's really not. She's, uh, you want to take a drop home for her? Put in a coffee for the No. Or she she takes to, the bus. She has to go to the courthouse tomorrow. Courthouse tomorrow. On Whatever, sh- wherever she works. Two drop, Jerry, what? two drops. Wherever she works, not the courthouse, but. <laughs> she wherever she works. Law, law stuff. Give her a little blast of this in the morning. No. Talk to her. Put some Joey, little, two drops. Put a little Pink Floyd for her in the morning before mm-hmm. she takes the train. See what happens. Give her a start. Yeah, see what happens. What's going to happen? She ain't going to be mad at you. You're going to open up her mind. She's going to sit there. You're going to watch Law and Order with her. And then it'll all come to her. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, if she stays home. That's good. Then you yeah, stay that, home. That, but you're talking about what she's already at work when this happens. No, no, no. Ah. You're going to tell her not to go to work. That You dosed her. <laughs> Just dose her when she's in the shower. <laughs> That'd be fun one day to do. Yeah, that could happen. She comes. She eats breakfast and dosed. And then say, yeah. I got to tell you something. You know I love you. You can't go to work like call and sick. Why? Because in... 16 fucking seconds you're gonna start feeling things down your spine and shit it's gonna hit you heavier than it hits me I've had basic training with Uncle Joey you've had no training <laughs> I make you either half a star and we giggle like two fucking momos I'm just dosing you with America's finest fucking look at you huffing and puffing what am I gonna no, I'm do okay I'm okay now we'll see for how long you want me to call the ambulance no I'm okay you sure yeah, <laughs> yeah no, there's no ambulance no I'm okay I'm fine. <laughs> it, it's, uh, Did you smoke some more of that weed? We could if you want to. That's what you need, though. You need to take a hit of the savage. Oh. You need to hit this other shit, the Godfather. Okay. Right. That's what you need. You need to calm down a little and smoke the whole fucking thing this time. One hit ain't gonna do nothing for nobody. You gotta fucking hit this thing like it owes you twenty dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it owes you twenty. <laughs> What's that stuff, Joe? This is the Godfather. This is a fucking indica direct from the jungles. <laughs> what was that other one we smoked? 24 carat? 24 carat carrot from perennial and shit. It's fucking 24. Both of them are from fucking perennial. Knocking motherfuckers out. 24 B, yeah. It's so funny because uh, I, I would never buy. I'd still be wearing white cotton underwear if me undies didn't come into my life. I really would. 
I didn't even know underwear like me on these existed. I didn't know underwear like me on these would be comfortable. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen other types of briefs, but they weren't for me. I'm an old school boxer and an old school fucking cotton whitey, tidy whitey type of guy. I don't even like black underwears. I see black underwears and a guy, you're fucking hiding something. You got crabs, you don't want to show me your blood pins and shit. <laughs> something ain't right, cocksucker. Uh. So now, guess what? I, I fly commando maybe 60-40. But if I got underwear on, I got on me on these for two reasons. One, comfort, and the second reason, how moist and dry. Dry it keeps me. You know why? Because of Modar. Picture world, we're putting on a new pair of underwear isn't just fresh. You're stepping into a better day. Think about that. When you get up in the morning, you put your underwear on, you're like, ah, it's going to be a great fucking day. Think about it. Underwear is the first thing you put on, the last thing you take off. Why would you settle for anything less than the best feeling underwear on the planet? Why? Me undies is what you're looking for. It focuses solely on producing the most comfortable underwear you've ever experienced, period. My friends at MeUndies sent me a pair a while back, and now I can't imagine wearing anything else. Like I said, it makes each day much better, especially when I go to jiu-jitsu. I wear those things, controls my nuts, and keeps me very dry down there. For the price of two cocktails, MeUndies will deliver your new favorite pair of underwear right to your doorstep. Better day guarantee. Try them on, and if you're not the most comfortable, best-feeling undies you've ever had, they'll refund you and let you keep the pair for free. That's how confident they are. That's real confident that you're going to like their product. Including the price of a sweet touch of Modal. A special fabric made with the best in class raw materials that are scientifically proven to be three times softer than cotton. I'm telling you these uber cozy undies are sold exclusively on the MeUndies website where you'll enjoy free standard shipping in the US and Canada. For a limited time this is what I'm going to do. Everyone in my audience gets 20% off their first order, but you got to go to our special URL, MeUndies.com slash Joey. Again, MeUndies.com slash Joey, 20% off your first order. Listen, it's Valentine's Day. Take the stick out of your ass, all right? Go to MeUndies.com right now and get 20% off your first order. With the MeUndies Better Day Guarantee, you got nothing to lose. So don't wait any longer. Go to MeUndies.com right now slash Joey for 20% off your first order. Listen, go for the two pair. It's Get a pair for you and one for Mama, the red one with the hearts. You're going to love them. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. Number two, Lee, last week you and I had a conversation. You called me up. Uh, I think it was the night you ate the chocolate, the fake chocolate. And you were talking online. It was about not fake chocolate. Well, Paula was talking. It was fake chocolate. Let's, let's face it. Did you smoke that pipe yet, Lee? Not yet. I was trying to hold on for the... No, no. Hit that fucking mule. Okay. okay. This, this is what I live with. I just told him to smoke and he leaves it there. Yeah. <laughs> Hit that thing. That's nothing. Come on. Let's go. Okay. Stop being a half of fruit. <sighs> let's go. There's nothing that's going to calm you down. Take a good fucking old mule here right there. Leave it on there. No, 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 no. no. Go ahead. Come on. Look at him. Look at what I got to deal with. You see this? <laughs> no, no. Give me the fucking pipe because I'm going to hit you in the head with it because you aggravate me on purpose. <laughs> Go like this, straight lipped, straight thing, and light it. Don't light it like this, like a candle. There you go. Now, leave it there for a second. Go a little closer. Tilt it to, to 2 o'clock. There you go. You see, I got to deal with it. No, 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 no. Leave the pipe on the fucking fire. Uh -huh. do, you, do you see this? Baby hits. Do you see what he's doing to me? He Baby be, hits. <laughs> he wants to embarrass me in front of the church I've family. I'm trying to embarrass anybody. Huh? Oh, my God. You uh, what? I'm just, I, I've never smoked with this pipe before. Just. <laughs> You've been smoking with that pipe for the last week and a half. Not really. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see, I got to deal with it. Anyway. It's, 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 Paula was cooking what last week when I called? The West African peanut chicken. It was delicious. It was, it, it. It's uh, I love peanut sauce and it, it was it was really good. We made some. I think it was jasmine rice came with it. It was delicious. It was it 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 was the best blue apron that we've had. I loved it. I'm gonna what make it again. Come, but it came with jasmine rice. I think else. so, but it can it it would work with anything. <coughs> I think it would work with beef. I think it would work with 
uh, chicken. It obviously worked with chicken. It could probably maybe work with fish. Who knows? But it, it was just it was really good. It was my, easy to make. Yeah, it took Paul like forty five minutes to make the whole thing. For less than ten dollars per person per meal, Blue Apron will deliver seasonal recipes along with proportion ingredients to make your delicious home cooked meals. Choose from a variety of new recipes each week, or let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you. Recipes are not repeated within a year, so you'll never get bored. Customize your recipe each week based on your preferences. Blue Apron has several delivery options, so you can choose what fits your needs. And there's no weekly commitment, so you only get the deliveries that you want them. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card, proportion ingredients that can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they'll make it right. Check out this week's menu, all right? Look at what they got this week. This is the week to be a Blue Apron. Cheddar cheeseburger with smoked with sautéed onions. And that's a two-family deal. That's a two-people deal like Paula would get with him. Spiced chicken chili and baked cannelloni. If you're in the family plan, chicken milanese with lemon potato salad, roasted pork with apple walnut farro salad, and crispy barramundi. Who the hell knows how to cook barramundi? You? 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 No. Now you can learn and make an affordable, healthy meal at your home. Do me a favor. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free, gratis, with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash joey. Again, blueapron.com slash joey. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash joey. Blue Apron is a better way to cook, all right? And listen, who's better than you? You order today, you get it by Valentine's Day, and you can make a nice dinner with your wife or girlfriend or your living boyfriend, whatever the hell you got going on over there, and you can have a nice time for Valentine's Day. What the fuck are we talking about here? Love is love. What isn't better than love than cooking with somebody? Again, I want to thank Blue Apron, and I want to thank MeUndies for sponsoring the podcast. Dean Delray, sorry to get you off on a bad start. No way, that was funny. <laughs> right? Ah. Uh, I don't like to see you like that. You're a sharp kid, so we'll have to do this again sometime. You know, <laughs> get together again, you know. But I love that you came on and you smoke. You volunteered to smoke the death, you know. Yeah. We don't fuck around with raw materials here. Everything we bring into the studio is 100%. You're going to get killed. I had to this, take the ride with you guys. Yeah, this is yeah. no fucking... We don't play in here. When I go to the weed store, they know. This yeah. new girl they got yeah. is a professional. The last three batches she's given me. She told me, this is what you want. Yeah, that stuff was killer. Man. A little dirty white chick with freckles. Yeah. They know their reefer. Man. From the Midwest, they know their reefer. I guess so. Not these little fucking Hollywood Valley girls. They just look good and they sell you what, you know, they'll sell you junk. Yeah. Sell them that blue p- purple shit. These little dirty white chicks in the Midwest, I love them. Dirty feet. Yeah. She had yoga pants on. She's all warped and shit. Uh-uh. But she knows how to smoke a weed. So that's all I care about. Damn. Fuck about that shit. Lee. Yeah. Lee, you survived. <laughs> You're like the Tom Brady of podcast. You know that? No, I'm not. But... Who's better than you? Nobody, Lee. Nobody. It, it... I broke your balls for ten, 20 days about that acid. For three weeks, I've been tormenting them. It's at the house boiling. <laughs> And I got another batch and this batch. We got about two months of acid. Oh, oh yeah, Lee. We're going into acid training. Look at Lee. He got all depressed all this. I'm not depressed. I, I like it. It's just, it's, it's I, a I big, it's a big process. What process? What do you mean? What? You go home tonight, you have a milkshake, you go to bed, and we do it again tomorrow night with a different strain. I'm not going to see, I'm not going to see bed <laughs> before Wednesday. Nah, you'll be asleep tonight. No. Listen, dog, you see that banister of weed? I'm going to leave you with that whole container of weed. Yeah. When I come back here tomorrow, that better be all gone. That's going to be you till 6 in the morning. Token, token. When you leave here, you go to the NoHo Diner, you get two eggs, bacon, some toast. You go home nice with your belly full, and you call it a night. Nah. That's how professional. That sounds nice. That's how you do it. Don't go home and cook. Don't go home and talk to nobody. You don't want to talk to nobody. You're not going to talk to nobody. There's nothing to talk about. You're going to get your two eggs down the corner. The waitress wants to talk to you. Talk to her for two minutes. After that, you walk in the house about 6.30. As she's getting up, you don't know nothing. Where were you? I don't know. I bumped into some Martians. They made me take something. 
Nobody knows nothing. You think I'm gonna tell my wife nothing? My wife saw the sugar cubes. She didn't see the acid. She thought, but what do I give a fuck? Right or wrong? Yep. As long as I don't say nothing. As long as they don't see it, it didn't happen. That's yeah. All right. That's all right. I always remember that, my friend. If oh. they don't see it, it didn't fucking happen. Unless you bring a clamor or take a picture or tweet it like a half a fag. Nah. You'll we're be we're fine. We're surrounded by clamors. I love you, motherfucker. See you Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. Same back time, same back channel. Don't forget to support my brother, Dean Delray. February 18th. In Denver, what's the name of the theater? Sue Teatro. Can they go to your website to get tickets? Yep, yep, and there's a link, uh, a, a code. Uh, candles lit, get you a discount A little ticket. discount for you, so you're nice, go have a great time. I love you, cocksuckers. See you Wednesday night, 8 p.m., same bat time, same bat channel. Two, we're going to do th uh, we did two tonight. We'll do four doses Wednesday night. Oh, my God. I love you guys. Stay uh -huh. black.